uh, 40% of our audience have joined already. Yes, so people yes. will be joining. We should not delay much. So uh, hi and uh, welcome all to the two-day event of uh, Research Brand Writing Workshop, which is organized by uh, Dr. D.Y. Patel, Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and uh, Research, as well as uh, Climate Research Solutions. So this is uh, Dr. Tarun, the Director of uh, Climate Research Solutions uh, and also the host for uh, the event today. So we at Climate have been providing services and trainings in clinical research, clinical operations, SAS, CDM, pharmacovigilance, medical writing, cardiac pharmacology, and uh, many more. Uh, for more information, uh, please visit our website at climate.in. And also, we are very happy and proud to be partnering with Dr. D.Y. Patel Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research for this two-day workshop. So now uh, I hope everyone is aware of the topics, but uh, anyway, let's have a quick glance of the topics that we are going to cover uh, in these two days. So generally we will be covering research grant proposal types, topics like selecting an appropriate grant, components of a grant proposal, executive summary, teams and collaborations, goals and objectives, deciding the timelines, evaluation, review of proposal, and also uh, some special topics like how to write a strong cover letter, research proposal, flowchart, do's and don'ts, proposal writing rules, uh, KT that is knowledge translation, KD that is knowledge dissemination, KMB, KMB that is knowledge mobilization, along with exclusive grant samples from ICMR, DST, Department of Science and Technology, NIH that is National Institute of Health and industrial proposal sample. Now I would like to introduce our guests and panelists for this workshop, starting with our chief guest, Dr. Nabil PM, who is a PhD from Biomedical Instrumentation, IIT Madras, is the lead scientist at Healthcare Technology Innovation Center, HTIC, IIT Madras. Also, we have Dr. Sohan Chitlange, principal the Dr. D.Y. Patel Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research, and Dr. Ajit Singh, CEO of Climate Research Solutions, research scientist for ICMR Department of Medicine, Kasturba Medical College, Manipal Academy of Higher Education. Uh, along with us, we are also having Dr. N. Urupa, who may not be available today, will be joining tomorrow. He is a PhD, Pharmaceutics, BHU, Varanasi, Research Director, SDM University, Darwat, Karnataka. Dr. Adepali Viranjaneyalu, who is a research director and professor, Department of Pharmacology, Dr. D.Y. Padal Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research. And finally, we have Dr. Ravindra Wahale, the assistant professor, Dr. D.Y. Padal Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research. Okay. Now, before I invite our chief guest, I would like to uh, share a few uh, words uh, about him, those who are not uh, familiar with his works. So Dr. Nabil, he was born at Malapuram, Kerala in 1991, received his B.Tech in Electrical and Electronics Engineering from Government Engineering College, Barton Hill University of Kerala in 2012. He also received his MS and PhD in Biomedical Instrumentation from the Indian Institute of Technology, that is IIT, Madras. His doctoral research involved investigating biophysical models, further developing indigenous technologies for the cuffles and calibration calibration-free measurement of the central arterial blood pressure. He was awarded IIT Madras 2018-19 Institute Research Award. Currently, he is the lead research scientist in the cardiovascular division of the Healthcare Technology Innovation Center, HTIC at IITM Research Park, which is a research and development center of IIT Madras. He focuses on cardiovascular research and dealing with development, developing mathematical models optimum sensors, instrumentation, and signal processing techniques for biomedical applications, simulation of the physiological systems, and performing experimental studies and clinical trials on humans and animal models. His research interests include vascular aging, central blood pressure, and hemodynamics, local assessment of vascular material properties and biomechanics, vascular toxicity, and gestational hemodynamics. His scientific contributions are reflected in the scope and quality of over 100 peer-reviewed public publications, six issued patents, besides 30 pending patents. All right, so without any further ado, I now invite Dr. Nabil to inaugurate this workshop. 
Dr. Nabil. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful and elaborate introduction, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to thank Dr. Rajit for inviting me to participate in this program. Thanks, Rajit, for that. And Dr. Sohan, thank you for your time today. We are glad that you are here with us today. Again, a hard welcome for everyone who has decided to acquire a new talent or honor your existing skills. That's great. Amazing. And first and foremost, I would like to appreciate the climate team for organizing this training, an exclusive workshop on research and writing. That's brilliant. Uh, now, I have taken part of several workshops, but this one is truly one of a kind. This is especially important for the young scientists and those who are starting out their uh, research careers, uh, especially when you, know, you need a huge amount of fun for doing excellent research in the current scenario. Um, one of the most important skills for uh, young researchers to learn is, of course, how to write an effective research proposal and research grants. In spite of how many research articles you have authored, you have published, writing yeah. a research grant is required a special care. It's, it is indeed an art. You need to master it. It's an art, of course. I think we missed you, Dr. Nabil. Uh, uh, hi, Dr. Nabil. I think I'm audible right now, right? Uh, you were not audible. Ah, okay. So I was uh, from the beginning. No, 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 no. Just last one minute. Ah, okay, so I, I, I was telling that you know one of the most important skills for the young researchers to learn is, of course, how to write an effective research proposal and the research grants. It sure. doesn't matter how many research articles you have authored and you have published. You know, uh, writing the research grant requires a specific care. It's required skill. It's an art. You need to master that kind of an art. Uh, I, I, of course, research grant writing is a transferable skill too, uh, which is usually acquired over time and the multiple efforts and writing with your faculties or your co-investigators, you can learn it, you know, but the purpose of having a unique and targeted workshop like this that Clinimate is organizing and is, of course, speed this learning curve, because if you want to become an independent researcher at your earlier career, you need to master this art. More importantly, this workshop sessions will guide participants through some of the pitfalls and common uh, mistakes that encounter while writing and publishing this kind of research grants. Learning what not to do uh, is equally important. I think Dr. Ajit, your instructor for this workshop, would also teach some of the tricks and trade that you need to learn early on in order to have uh, you know, effectively write a research grant. He's an expert in that. Indeed, uh, you have to indicate your idea to uh, the reviewers in a very clear for them to offer some financial support. That's very important. You know, I think I by uh, end of this workshop, by tomorrow, you shall master some of the skills, which may be including how to write an effective research proposal uh, in a most effective way and convince your reviewers to, uh, you know, at least you will definitely will grant the proposal and the detailed structure of the proposal writing and planning your work tracks, finance, um, how to your finance in a convincing fashion in the proposal. And I think Dr. Ajit will also touch some of the importance of your review process uh, in the grant because you also have to understand when you submit the proposals, how and what is the process it is going, where it is, where it is uh, who, who, who is going to review it, review, review the proposal, uh, you know, what is the stages they are actually taking and what they're specifically looking for. That's very important. You, it's, you need to convince your idea that you are going to do um, in the future and someone has to believe that idea and they should agree upon giving you some financial support. Uh, uh, planning to do some breakthrough you need a huge amount of financial support 
why should someone believe you so you need to understand the process what specific things a reviewer will be looking for in your research plan and i think you are also covering how to write the executive summary how to write the covering letter that everything is important because you have to convey somebody to get the money that's right. the ultimate thing and you should of course by end of this work you should be capable uh, and master the art of writing the various grants certainly research grant where this workshop is uh, focused but when you have an idea um, of how to write a research grant then you will be able to go beyond that like you no know, various award and innovation grants proposals for collaborative research with the top notch institutions in india and abroad so you can uh, widen your research scope and come up with some breakthrough rather than playing only with the seed grant typically you will get from institutions it's straight forward you have to think beyond and you know, i think uh, the this workshop is also planning for the dst and icmr proposal writing in specific template for that that's very important because now the government is actually putting so much fund for expanding the research and um, making those as transferable patentable ideas so they they put the money so finan- I mean, like there are money you have to ask for it in a right fashion so you definitely will learn all these things i i i uh, have gone through the um, structure of the workshop it's brilliantly structured uh with this i would like to use the opportunity to officially inaugurate this workshop i think dr shahan will make it more formalized this workshop launch all of you actively participate and interact with the instructor dr ajit happy learning thank you all thank you for that thank you very much uh, dr nabil thank you very much and uh, you know before uh, tarun starts i uh, so tell you guys i and dr nabil uh, have been directors in you know directors in world youth heart federation he is heading the technology department technology team and i am heading the research team there uh, and we are collaborated for last two years we are working together we were heading one journal also as uh, you know editor in chief uh, in frontiers and there are multiple collaborations and uh, you know i just asked him he has some issues uh, you know problems but still he has joined so you know for this inauguration and uh he has accepted you know and once only he has accepted the uh, our invitation you know besides he has a very busy schedule at iit madras and uh, you know he is heading the uh, healthcare innovation center uh, for uh, you know cardiac problems but still he uh, you know made this time uh, to you know join our inauguration session join our workshop so thank you very much dr navin thank you very much for uh, you know joining us thank yeah. you thank you thank you so much dr navin Yes, Dr. Tarun, please go ahead. Yes, now I uh, invite Dr. Sohan Chitlange, the principal of Dr. D.Y. Patel Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research. Dr. Sohan, please. Very good evening to all of you. Uh, I feel privileged to jointly open this uh, two days exclusive workshop on research grant proposal writing jointly organized by Dr. D.Y. Patel Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research and Climate Research Solution India. in association with world youth heart federation india uh, i heartily welcome again dr ajit singh ceo of climate research solution dr nabil from iit madras we have various different research scholars from across the country uh, my faculty members are there students are there i welcome them all and as uh, rightly said we have a collaboration with climate and uh, we are under a mou and this particular activity is a part of that mou and i want to congratulate both the teams our team dpu pharmacy and climate solution for, for coming up with a very relevant topic now right now every researcher uh, and every institution both means researcher faculty and institution they are uh, looking after some kind of guidance for writing a good research proposal and dr uh, nabil has already like uh, highlighted the importance of this particular workshop uh, that uh, writing a good proposal uh, research proposal needs lot of expertise it's a difficult task and you need to learn many things and if there are experts to guide on that particular thing it becomes easy for researcher teachers to write a particular proposal which will uh, whether that proposal is in tune with the 
in in line with the requirement of that particular funding agency whether it is appealing or not whether it is having a social relevance or not or whether it is adding some value or not to the uh, scientific community or in general also to the public so there are so many factors which impact that particular proposal and if you are getting direct input from the experts who are involved in all these activities having a lot of credentials to them dr udupa sir i know him uh, very well he was research director at manipal and uh, he is giving a talk on uh, research funding and opportunities since last so many years and so many at least from pharmacy faculty i know many of the uh, researcher and faculty member got benefited with his immense experience and expertise and uh, monipal is one of the best example wherein he had he has got too many grants lot of fundings are there with manipal and uh, i understand i have also seen the profile also that uh, that you will be guiding the participants with respect to icmr nih gst uh, funding so th there are different funding agencies and every funding agency is, is having their different theme and different requirement so if you are covering all that part and giving inputs to the participant i think this definitely this will help everyone and uh, even we uh, as a institution every institution right now is uh, struggling with respect to grant and this is all required uh, mandatory also like to develop the research culture uh, to provide that research funding seed funding to even build the infrastructure facilities as well as ranking exercise like nowadays nirf we all know whether it is nirf or nba or nac so everywhere the funding is required so that one side it becomes a mandatory part for the institution and second side if you are getting the fundings that funding will definitely help the institution and researcher to go ahead and to contribute for the scientific community so even uh, i i want to congratulate both the teams once again that they came up with a very relevant topic and uh, i hope and i am sure actually that these two days will be a great learning experience for all the participants so uh, best of luck for this particular activity thank you thank you dr sohan sir uh, thank you very much and uh, thank you everyone yes dr tarun yes uh, now i invite you uh, dr rajit to take over <laughs> okay thank you so much so uh, first of all i would like to thank dr dy patel institute of pharmaceutical sciences uh, to uh, you know give us this uh, wonderful opportunity to collaborate for this uh, uh, you know very uh, what we say need of the hour workshop i was planning for this uh, for a long time uh, you know but then i thought like, like uh, you know uh, we should do it uh, with some i uh, great institutions and we have dr dy patel and other institutions in the great list of uh, you know our mou so i proposed this uh, to dr sohan and he accepted immediately he told like let's go, go go ahead with this and then uh, you know uh, while proposing that i asked uh, dr navil as i told you he's my great friend and uh, dr udupa he is my guru he only taught me all the research at manipal so you know under his guidance only uh, everyone learned because he was a research director a research director at manipal uh, that time when i was you know uh, doing my post graduation and uh, my phd uh, from kasturo medical college so that time he was the uh, research director and he taught everything and he was my uh, you know one of my phd dec member also doctoral advisory committee member so he taught everything and uh, you know uh, a little background yeah. about uh, uh, you know my uh, phd and grant journey so you know when i was starting my phd i and dr tom uh, i mean the hod then of cardiology here at kasturba uh, medical college we were just uh, you know thinking and you know discussing about the grants and you know some research proposals so we came up with this uh, you know registry idea registry of heart failure so registry is i mean it's not a big deal you know frankly guys it's not a big deal it's just collecting the data prospectively or retrospectively it's nothing intervention no need to give the medications nothing to do with that you know it is just collecting the data so we came up with the heart failure registry uh, proposal and actually in india there is no uh, registry culture till till now uh, people are you know coming up with the registries now uh, but only on the institutional levels and all so that time we thought like okay let's do something in heart failure and i was really interested in heart failure so i was uh, you know even uh, working some project you know doing some project uh, that time so we came up with this uh, registry idea and we submitted to six uh, i mean i i i have 
you know, spoken about this at multiple, uh, you know, uh, platforms. So we submitted to six uh, organizations, uh, three private organizations and three government organizations, and it was accepted by three. You know, one Novartis, one, uh, you know, one other uh, private, uh, you know, and one ICMR. So we then have to think uh, which, uh, with which grant we have to go. So we chose with the highest grant amount <laughs> and we went with the, uh, you know, Novartis and you won't believe guys, Novartis provided us 96 lakhs uh, for our, uh, you know, registry that time. And after that, uh, you know, this was uh, just, on, just an opening uh, for my, uh, you know, research grant journey or my research journey. And after that, I've been involved in multiple, uh, you know, clinical trials. I have written multiple grants from, uh, you know, industry, from ICMR, travel grants from, uh, you know, and research grants from European Society of Cardiology, from NIH, many, you know, got rejected, uh, a few got accepted, but uh, that, uh, you know, the journey and that, uh, you know, trial uh, of, uh, you know, writing the grants and, you know, uh, writing the grant proposals, coming up with the ideas, coming up with the research questions and what to do, what not to do, that learning has, uh, uh, you know, that ta taught me a lot of things. So uh, then I thought like, okay, let's share with the uh, with our audience, with our students, with our fellow colleagues, uh, with our, uh, you know, uh, our uh, academicians. So, because in India, it's, uh, you know, it's still research is not that great. Uh, research is, is still, you know, at the lower side uh, in comparison to the European countries, in comparison to the, uh, you know, USA or in comparison to, you know, Australia or, I mean, research is really low and low in India uh, right now. And if we, uh, you know, talk about the funds, if we talk about the grants, uh, I think government also has, uh, you know, right now they are uh, really focusing on the clinical research, they are really focusing on the laboratory mm -hmm. research, they are really focusing on the research, but, uh, you know, still our budgets, our funds are not supporting much, okay. So, uh, this was the idea of uh, coming up with this, and uh, I have published around 50 plus papers uh, till date, uh, you know, under the umbrella of Manipal Academy of Higher Education. And one and a half year back, I was appointed by ICMR as uh, you know research scientist C uh, for uh, their uh, one of the wonderful registry which is going on uh, you know at 212 sites in India. Uh, I mean, I'm not taking care of all the sites. I'm taking care of 12 uh, you know reporting centers, 12 sites in uh, South Karnataka. Uh, so I'm working here at Manipal again, uh, a Department of Medicine right now and uh, you know taking care of all the uh, you know diabetic registries i mean diabetic young diabetic registries i'm i'm not taking care of all the registries which we are uh, you know uh, conducting under the icmr but i have appointed especially for the young diabetic registry young diabetic registry means they are taking all the patients uh, you know younger uh, than 25 years of age so we are taking all the patients and we are you know including all over india till date we have recruited around 26000 of patients and we are, uh, you know, getting a, a really good number to get uh, something out of them, you know, to manage that young diabetes and to, you know, improve the lifestyle of the, uh, you know, young patients. So that is different. Now I'll come to the grant writing and, uh, you know, first of all, uh, I must thank our audience. There are, uh, you know, more than 400 registrations, more than 400 registrations. I can see only 196 participants here, but we had 400 students, we had around, uh, you know, 100 students and 250, 250 academicians, guys, 250 academicians and researchers. So I can understand that how important this topic is by looking at my audience, by looking at, you know, the registration numbers and the, you know, uh, the registration distribution. Students, uh, you know, in their young age, in their final years, in their second year, third years, they have joined but only 100. And if I look at the race researchers and uh, you know, the academicians, it's a, it's a great number for us. And I'm, I'm really overwhelmed guys uh, to you know, host you uh, today at this platform. So without wasting much time, I should start. Uh, so let me share the uh, syllabus first, what we are going to cover. I hope everyone uh, can see my slides and I'm audible perfectly. Dr. Tarun? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I request, first of all, I request everyone to put off their mics, put off your mics. Uh, okay, so, uh, you know, this is the syllabus, what we are going to cover as uh, Dr. Naveel has, uh, you know, told and uh, 
uh, Dr. Sahan sir also has uh, you know mentioned we are covering almost everything. You know, almost everything what we need in a you know grant proposal writing and research mm -hmm. grant proposal writing. Okay, we are covering. Uh, we are starting from the research grant proposal types, selecting the appropriate grant, purpose of the proposal, components, all the you know executive summaries, strong cover letters, team collaborations, goal and objectives, methodology, entire methodology, how to estimate the budget, what are the budget formats, how to decide the timelines you know, uh, uh, Gantt charts. So there are multiple things what we're going to cover. Okay, knowledge translation, knowledge dissemination, knowledge mobilization, mobilization and, uh, you know, proposal writing rules, do and don'ts, very important thing. You know, very important things are, uh, you know, when we are writing a grant, uh, grant proposal, we should think what we have uh, not to do. Okay. Um, guys, please mute yourself. Okay, so that we have to, uh, you know, uh, very importantly, we have to think of like what we have to do and what we have to avoid while writing a proposal uh, for the research grant. Okay, and then I'll be definitely covering, uh, you know, uh, the research grant examples and samples from ICMR, from DST, from NIH, and from the industry also. Uh, you know, my own proposal I'll share with you tomorrow. Uh, uh, you know, my own registry proposal, my own, uh, you know, proposal which was accepted by, uh, you know, Novartis. Uh, then uh, let's let's come to the today's topics. Let me share, uh, you know, something with you guys. Okay. Um, okay, so this is the slides. So I actually people uh, don't you know believe in slides much. Uh, I don't prepare much slides, but yes, there are uh, around 17 slides what we are going to discuss in next one and a half or two hours. I have merged both the modules today. So uh, again, I welcome you to the research grant proposal writing workshop. Uh, and I'm Dr. Ajit Singh. So today we are going to cover this. This is day one coverage. We are going to cover grant and funding sources. What are the funding sources? Selection of appropriate grant and grant proposal purpose. What is the purpose behind writing the grant proposal? Why do we write the grant proposal? Okay, then what are the research questions? How do we select the research questions? How do we find the research questions? That is very important. Okay, how do uh, uh, you know, write the things? How do we fix the components? How do we you know, go for the budget estimation? How do we go for the timeline settings? And then today I'll be, you know, taking you through the ICMR website where you can see, uh, you know, where you can see multiple, uh, you know, grant openings which are opened now for public. And you can also, uh, you know, see the samples, how to get the samples, how to see all the documents to submit and all. Okay. And then I'll show you the exclusive sample of ICMR today. And one sample from, uh, I mean, the guidelines of NIH, the sample from DST and the proposal samples, actual proposals, accepted proposal samples from I NIH, National Institute of Health USA. I'll show you tomorrow. I have, uh, you know, I have, I got around four specialized medical and technology, uh, you know, related proposals, which are, uh, which have been accepted by NIH. Okay. I'll show you with the titles, with the topics, with the, you know, how they have written the entire proposal. Okay. How they have written the entire proposal to NIH and it was accepted for the million dollars grant. Okay. I'll show you that those samples. And today we are going to discuss again about the research proposal flowchart. So stay tuned with us and let's learn and people, uh, you know, don't hesitate to ask any questions. If you have any questions in between, I don't mind you please raise your hand or open your mic and ask your questions. Okay, so, uh, and even we can discuss at the end also, we are uh, going to discuss all the questions, all the queries at the end of the session, but you can ask in between also if you have any kind of query. Okay, and don't worry, we are going to cover a lot of things. So this is today's funda. And for tomorrow, we kept a very special session on grant writing rules, do's and don'ts, and, you know, other aspects. And tomorrow only we are going to discuss the cover letter and those samples. Okay, so today we are going to cover this, whatever we are seeing in the screen, right? So first of all, what is grant? Okay, so what is grant? Grant is nothing, but it is a type of funds or amount uh, for a specific purpose. Okay, grants are the funds for a specific purpose 
which are given to any individual or an organization okay to perform research or to perform the uh, you know particular activities okay research grants are generally obtained through a competitive process so research, research grants are not uh, you know something you submit and you will get there is always a competition because you are not only one researcher in the world or in the domain or in the area so there are people who are uh, you know competing you and who submit a lot of type uh, you know a lot of uh, you know other grants and uh, you know different different types of topics different different type of, types of uh, uh, you know areas of the research and uh, collaborations you know collaborative research collaborative approach or approach to the research did they you know come up with multiple ideas novel ideas so it is obtained through a competitive process the competitive process is like it will be reviewed your try your grant proposal will be reviewed by a team of expert, by a team of expert people. please off your mics mute your mics okay so it will be getting through a competitive process the competition process means you have to write a perfect pitch for your proposal for your idea for your uh, you know title and then it will be going through a, a, a you know an extensive review process and that review process uh, will choose uh, you know the review committee will choose the perfect pitching and perfectly matched grant okay perfectly matched proposal for the grant and then they allot the grant so you know based on that we can definitely say that this is not a gift okay grants are not a gift or charity or loan so if it is a charity or gift or loan that is not research funds that is not grant grants are never funds or i mean never gifts or loan or charity okay it is always a relationship between grantee and grantor grantor means whoever is giving you the grant and whoever is receiving the grant is grantee uh, sorry okay so there is a there is a relationship of exchange so the what is the exchange exchange could be you know any type exchange could be any type any type means uh, you know, it could be in form of, you know, research output, it, it could be form of publications, it could be form of, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, maybe molecular molecule, uh, you know, a new molecule development, or it could be anything, okay, that exchange will be there, that relationship for exchange will be there between grantor and grantee. Okay, so the, uh, if, 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 if I say, uh, you know, definition of grant in one line, this is a fund for a specific purpose or activity given to an individual or an organization generally obtained by uh, you know obtained through a competitive process and with the exchange of relationship or relationship of exchange okay that exchange would be anything right now this is definition and then i'll go to the funding sources so as we know there are multiple funding sources from the basic levels from the basic levels like you have institutes, there are institutional fundings. Okay, institutes also support the fundings. Uh, universities also provide the fundings for the research. Uh, you know, universities may not provide you two crores, five crores or 10 crores, but universities help you establishing your research idea. They may provide you 10,000, they may provide you one lakh, they may provide you 10 lakh only, but they are, uh, there are, uh, you know, the people, there are the universities, there are the organizations who or which supports their academicians, their students with the great ideas, with the great proposals, and they, you know, help them conducting the research in their institution. As uh, Dr. Sohan Chitlange rightly mentioned, that it is, uh, you know, a game of, uh, uh, you know, ranking certifications and, uh, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, upgradations of the research, eminence. So, you know, everything matters in that. So that's why universities also, uh, you know, support and universities also provide the grants to uh, you know, grants to their academicians, their doctors, their clinicians, their, uh, you know, students. So, uh, you know, that is the uh, individual level. And after individual level, when we go up, there are state level grants. Okay, state level grants are, uh, you know, certainly a little uh, restricted, like, you know, uh, to save the, I mean, major, majorly, uh, you know, the state grants are for the cultural activities, for the cultural growth, for the uh, you know, like uh, uh, they're specific, they, they are specific, they're restricted to the state culture or state research, okay, uh, state development. So, uh, and then after the state things, we are having our strong central team, that is ICMR, DST, CSIR, and, you know, DBT, this Department of Biotechnology, Department of Science, 
and technology and CSIR is there, ICMR is there, Indian uh, you know, Council for Medical Research is there. So they are providing a lot of research, a uh, lot of research funds, lot of travel grants, lot of you know, research grants different different research grants you know in health science in you know uh, in technology in you know uh, humanitarian in you know uh, in uh, i mean there are a lot of grants in you know geology in you know uh, what we say is ocean research there are multiple grants you know thousands of the domains of the grants uh, are available in our you know icmr dst and dpt okay you can search you will get a lot of grant openings okay they may be relevant to you they may not be relevant to you but you can get all the you know uh, research grant openings in different different sites so first internal as i told you and then state schemes are there and then there are the federal government federal government means the central government central government has its own agencies like you know as i told you icmr dst dbts and then we have industry okay industries are uh, you know focusing on their specific agendas agendas means uh, you know their specific subjects their specific uh, you know uh, aims aims means like if i'm talking about novartis novartis will think of like okay they need the patient data they need uh, to try their drugs they need to try their new molecules so they they need that you know their agenda is to try the new molecules in the public and the patients you know uh, uh, maybe that is phase 4 phase, i mean phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 any kind of uh, you know trials or maybe registry post marketing uh, surveys, post marketing research, anything it could be. So industry also funds and they collaborate with the institutions. They, uh, you know, propose the PI, uh, you know, the principal investigators from the institutions, from the hospitals, from the, you know, they, they select the researchers to, uh, you know, come up with the ideas. And even directly, you know, if you have a great idea and you want to propose to the industry, you can propose to the industry. Industry needs the data. Okay, so they, if it is feasible for them, even, uh, you know, they accept that. And you can, uh, you know, get the good grants as I got. Okay, that is the uh, on the live example from the industry. So you can do that, and you can search for the grants which are actually open from the industry side. If you are, uh, you know, uh, really interested, you can directly, you know, collaborate with the industry. You can directly, you know, propose your ideas. You can directly, uh, you know, if it is opening, you can get the site uh, at your hospital, at your college. And uh, you, you know you can ask for the students grant also. You can ask for the fellowships also from the industry. And other than that, there are the foundations and trusts. Okay, foundations and trust. Uh, we all know. Uh, we know uh, Melinda Gate Foundation, uh, which is I think world's number one you know research foundation, uh, which gives the grants to every uh, you know almost every domain: health science, technology. Uh, you know, uh, air pollution research. I mean, any in any area, you will get Bill, uh, you know, uh, Melinda Gates Foundation's, uh, you know, research grants. You can get in get for every area, and you just have to write a good proposal. It if it is, you know, aligning with their areas, if it is aligning with their, you know, aims, it is if it is aligning with their agendas, definitely you will get the grant. Okay, but it must be, you know, well written. It must be, you know, concisely written that we are going to discuss. That is the art and that we are going to discuss today. Okay, so there are multiple funding sources. As I told you, internal, state level, and, uh, uh, you know, we have at central level, we have at industries, and uh, we can apply through, uh, you know, the foundations and trust. In India, if I talk about the foundations, Reliance Trust uh, is there, and Tata Trust is there, Tata, uh, Tata Foundation is there which gives you a lot of travel grants, which gives you a lot of research grants. Okay, in India, you can try. Uh, if you are really looking for the private foundations and uh, private trusts. Okay, so a lot, lot of people have their uh, mics on today. Please off your mics, guys. Okay, so these are the funding sources where we can, you know, go for applications or where we can submit the application or where we can, you know, check their websites, uh, you know, uh, quite frequently and we get a lot of, uh, you know, opportunities to submit that. Now I'll come uh, to- Excuse me, uh, Dr. Ajit, uh, this is uh, Narahari. Uh, yes, sir. sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just wanted to tell that I have messaged twice. Uh, uh, see, the host will have uh, access to mute everyone at once uh, so they can mute them. And you can unmute no, them, uh, Doctor Nari. That is that is done from my side. That is done from our uh, team side also. But yeah. the thing is, they are new joinees. Oh, okay, okay, fine, fine. Okay, got they it. They have new joinees in between. They are new joinees yeah. in between. Yeah. Okay. Fine. fine. That's okay. okay. I mean, that's okay. It happens, and uh, you know that is the disadvantage of uh, you know online meetings. That's fine. Okay. Fine. No issues. Please carry yeah. on. Please. Thank you. 
so uh, you know now i'll come to the very important part of the grant writing you know now we have uh, we know what is grant now we know uh, you know where we can apply now the thing is how to select the appropriate grant see it is like i am going to icmr site i got multiple uh, you know grants grant openings okay uh, uh, some grants has the opening till 31st august some has uh, the deadline on 15th september some has the deadline of 30th september some has the deadline in october okay and uh, you know uh, i'm from the medical background okay so i i do my research in pharmacy and medicals so uh, you know i see okay there are the things on pain management there are the things on uh, you know infectious diseases there are the grants openings for heart failure there are the grant openings for uh, uh, you know myocardial infarction there are the grant openings in gynecology so i should not you know i should not go with all the grants okay i cannot go with all the grant submissions all the grant proposal writings all everything i have to think i have to select the appropriate grant like what grant is actually you know rightly open for me now i have to check that so how to get the appropriate grant how to select the appropriate grant like where i have to apply first of all think first okay think first at the first your first agenda should be will obtaining this grant aid your studies or career if you are a student first question should come in your mind will obtaining this grant aid my studies see if i am studying cardiology if i am studying cardiology and i am applying for gynecology grant it will definitely not aid my studies if i am assistant professor or associate professor in cardiology and i am applying for you know uh, grants in genetics maybe i mean genetics can be related definitely but if i am applying for uh, you know something else you know pharmaceutics grant or if i am applying for uh, uh, you know again uh, you know something which is reproductive system which will not help me at all it will not help my career at all okay it will not help my career so first question which should come in my mind should be will obtaining this grant aid my study or career if it is yes then go to the next question okay then go to the next question and next question must be do i meet the criteria does this grant meet my criteria okay criteria means not only grants criteria not only my criteria do i meet the criteria of the current grant or the current grant does meet my criteria i have to think of why i am telling this see i'll give an example as i told you right now meeting the criteria is not just about the scope okay it is about disciplines intentions purposes okay as we can see there are three things written disciplines means if i am from cardiology discipline gynecology will not meet my criteria it is not my discipline okay suppose in cardiology also if i am working in heart failure and the grants are you know mentioned perfectly that this grant is for any other cardiovascular problems like myocardial infarction or maybe for Uh, rheumatic heart disease right or maybe for arrhythmias i should think twice whether it is actually meeting my criteria meeting my discipline or not if i am from pharmaceutics and some grant is in pharmacology i should think twice whether i should go for this grant or not whether this is meeting my criteria or not why i am telling this see if it is not meeting your criteria if it is not meeting your intentions if it is not meeting your purposes that means you are wasting your time you are wasting your efforts you are wasting your resources you are wasting reviewers resources you are wasting reviewers time you are wasting everyone's time and if you get that you may not be the appropriate person to conduct that understand so always meet the criterias perfectly 
before going ahead going ahead you should meet those criteria perfectly and if you think okay it will aid your career or studies tick if it is meeting your criteria tick done okay it is meeting my criteria okay uh, it is meeting my criteria done so these things are done from my side now what is the next question i should ask myself before you know going to this grant what should be the next question is it feasible is it feasible feasible in the sense whether my facility whether my college whether my institution whether my uh, organization allow me to do this whether we have those facilities suppose uh, they are asking for you know uh, covid 19 genetic testing okay covid 19 genetic testing if suppose someone is asking in the grant like if you have the covid 19 genetic testing facilities then only it will be provided if i falsify padding uh, you know those grant reviewers and if i writing if i am writing or if i am hoping that my institute will get that machine to do that okay that means i am just falsifying the information i am padding up the grant okay that is not at all acceptable if your facilities are not compatible with the grant or with the grant proposals or with the grant demands or the grant needs or the grant targets or the grant uh, you know requirements you should not go for it first of all you have to check the feasibility feasibility in the sense of facilities in the sense of your competence if you are actually competent to do that if you have the great work capacity working capacity if you have the people if you have the right people right team if you have the support from your organization support from your uh, you know colleague support from your team because grant will not give you everything grant is just a money or grant is just you know the aid funds other things facilities working capacity teams support you have to get so third question is is it feasible check the feasibility if everything is matching if everything is available if it is feasible feasibility means i'm not saying that if it is not available then you should not you know think of if it is like okay you can make it available if you are confident about if you are confident about making the availability then definitely go for it if you think like okay i can i can get this machine before this grant and uh, you know this is expected soon then you should try you must try for it okay you must try okay so that is not a problem at all right but don't go beyond the facilities don't go beyond the capacities don't go beyond the support okay okay now you are done with these three questions your three question you are completely compatible with these three questions now the third thing i mean fourth thing is do you have sufficient time to allot because sometimes everything is there but i am stuck with something else see i'll give my example i am working for icmr i am working for climat i am working for whihf i am working as vice president for indica ai also but i'm very sure that i'm not the appropriate person to handle everything together i should restrict myself i should manage my time i should if i am having the sufficient time to allot for the grant or for the research or for something which i am trying to you know which i am going to try new if i have the sufficient time even plus sufficient plus time then only i should go for it you know why i should not go if i don't have the sufficient time to allot why i should not go for it because if i am just taking the grant from the grant agency and i am not giving my time and if i am not giving my 100% it will be just a the wastage of resources that means you are just snatching the opportunity from others who can do it perfectly okay who can do it perfectly this is research is not just for uh, you know uh, getting the grants or something research is something if you can really achieve that research is something where you have to achieve something achieve means achieve the results okay so you should think of your time that is very important question 
in selecting an appropriate grant whether you can give time to that and this is not about only grant this is about your life things also if you don't have time don't commit we do a lot of mistakes in our life i do a lot of things uh, you know such things okay uh, some things are really fascinating and i think okay i'll do that i get it but i can't i can't do that later and i really regret so don't make yourself or don't drag yourself into that you know regret part later so think of your time first and then think of other things okay these are very important aspect in selecting the appropriate grant and the next thing is is it achievable suppose you have everything it is aiding to your career it is meeting your criteria it is feasible it is you have sufficient time also but is it achievable see sometimes you have everything but the research population is not in your hand specific targets of the research grants or grant agencies or uh, you know on the on what basis they are giving the grant are not in our hand timelines maybe 7 so years dekha hua banaye the 10 years timeline okay those things are not in our hand so we have to think of that whether we have these things achievable if the things are not achievable then do not go for it okay if your population of the study population of the research is not achievable suppose i'm just looking for i'll i'll give you the perfect example i'll give you the live example we are conducting a clinical trial right now or one of the clinical trial is going on on colchicin okay that is funded by one of the france uh, you know france based company and in india uh, saint uh, you know george institute is uh, conducting from bangalore okay they are trying colchicin in the post covid patients who have the symptoms covid first wave has gone second wave has gone almost third wave i mean third wave has gone now covid is not there in india almost not there right now they are trying to get the colchicin tested in the covid patients for long term effects you won't believe when we started we thought are covid everyone got covid everyone will be uh, you know coming to this study we can get thousands of the patient and you won't believe we did not get even 10 patients yet people are coming people are saying no no why i should take medicine i just have the headache i just have the back pain i just have the leg pain why i should take the medicine for two months for these things these things can go uh, you know by 500 mg per stomol we go for the fascinating part but when it comes to the achievements or comes to the achievable targets it is nowhere in the scene okay we are struggling we are really struggling struggling with the population we are struggling with the timelines because we are not getting the populations means we are you know uh, lagging with the timelines and we are lagging with the results also so think of these five questions very important it is if it is aiding your career meeting the criteria if it is feasible and do you have sufficient time to allot and it is achievable then only go for the grant and along with that you should keep in mind about the funding agency whether these are trusted funding agencies or just fraud because uh, some people just commit to give you the funds but they do not give the funds they accept all the grants okay they accept all the grants but when it comes to the fund okay when it comes to you know deliver the funds when it comes to allot the funds they are nowhere so look at the agency type whether your funding agency is trustable or not and then look into the contract or agreement what they are making what they are exactly asking for if you are just a puppet for them if you are just working as uh, you know as a uh, you know worker for them just an employee it should not be their researchers are not the employees for a sponsor okay researchers have the helping hand researchers are the helping hands they are the shareholders in the research at least they can expect the publication if i am the pi i am designing the entire research and a sponsor is telling that okay you cannot be the first public uh, you know uh, in the publication first name or corresponding or you know any you you will not get any credentials what is my responsibility i am not uh, you know here just for the money research is of course research has the money okay 
research assistants, research associates, research, uh, you know, uh, scientists, they get the salary. But along with that, if you are performing that, you know, according to ICGME guidelines, whoever is performing the, whoever is performing the research, whoever is writing the manuscript are the true authors. Okay. So you have to look into the contract and agreements, what they are offering to you. Okay, look at those things. What they're exactly asking from you. Okay, those things, look at those things and then only you should select the grant. Okay, so these things are very important while you are uh, you know, selecting the grant. Okay, then now I'll go for the research grant proposal. Till now, we were just talking about the grants, funding agencies, and what we should look before selecting the grant. Now, what is proposal? We have everything in our hand. Now we should go for the proposal. So proposal is nothing, but it is an application or kind of a document or the set of documents that is submitted to an organization with the explicit intent of securing funding for a research project. Like I'm submitting my application or proposal through a document to ICMR or to NIH or to DST or DBT for the grants. Like, okay, I'm proposing my research idea. You read it, review it. And if it is possible, if it is feasible to your grant, if it is feasible to your grant needs, please fund, okay? And then there are two types of the research proposals. One is sought and one is full proposal. So it's not necessary that all the, uh, you know, funding organizations ask for sort proposals, but usually DST, DBT, and ICMR and NIH. These are the biggest funding agencies, I mean, in India and outside. So they usually first ask for the sort proposals. Okay, sort proposals means one or two pages proposals only. Then they read the novelty. Novelty means what's new in your research idea what's important, how you are going to proceed it, how you are going to perform it, what is your exactly competence. They will look into your profile. They will look into your idea. They will look into your process, your execution, your uh, you know long-term thinking. Then only they will ask you to send the full proposal. They don't want to waste. They don't want to waste their time in reviewing the entire. They don't want to waste their time in reviewing the entire or full proposals. So before going through the full proposals, they ask you to provide the sort proposals. Okay. And like abstracts. So once you submit the sort proposals, they go through all the sort proposals and the sort list, and then they ask for the full proposals like ICMR, DST, DBT. They first look for the sort proposals. They, you know, send the template also uh, for the sort proposals. And once your sort proposal is accepted, or it is, uh, you know, shortlisted, then they ask for the full proposal. So one more important thing here, acceptance of the sort proposal, acceptance of the sort proposal or abstract is not guaranteeing that you will get the grant. It is just shortlisted. Now you are submitting the full proposal. If your full proposal has the potential, then definitely you will get the grant. But yes, if your sort proposal is accepted and you are mentioning as it is, whatever you have mentioned in the sort proposal, you are, you know, expanding those things in the full proposal, you have a great chance to get the grant. You have the great chance to get the grant. So let's learn how to do that, how to expand those things. Now, okay, what is the idea behind writing a research proposal? Why can't I go and tell, okay, I have this idea, this is feasible, these are the timelines, I can do that. I'll tell to, uh, you know, ICMR and I tell them, okay, uh, why to write the research proposal? I can tell you my idea verbally. I can write in the email. Why you want the research proposal? Research proposal is the systematic document, guys. Research proposal is a systematic document. Okay, so why should I write the research proposal? What are the purpose behind writing the research proposal? Okay, let's, let's learn. Research proposal is nothing, but as I told you, it is an application. This is to sell your idea. As Dr. You know, uh, Nabil told initially, the word convince, remember, he was emphasizing on the word convincing. So the research proposal is to sell your idea to funding agencies, 
and to convince them on these terms we have to convince someone to give the paisa to give the money to give the funds for our research so proposal is that document which will convince them which is the uh, you know the way to convince funding agencies okay research proposal is the way to convince the funding agencies on the significance of the problem as dr sohan chitlange was mentioning about the social problems you know the problems from society which will benefit the society so you have to mention that you have to convince the funding agency on the significance of the problem how significant is the problem for the society how it is impacting the society what we will get after this research you have to convince them on that worth while research project that how much worth your research project has how it will influence the society you know social changes suppose i am talking about you know uh, water sanitation or water borne, borne diseases that is happening because of water uh, you know sanitation right so why why we need those why why we have to tackle those problems because our upcoming generations of springs are suffering with congenital heart problems congenital lung problems they are suffering with lot of infections they are suffering with uh, you know a lot of things lot of problems so we have to we have to convince them we have to convince <laughs> we have to convince the agencies like okay my research grant proposal has the worth which will give back to the society and then i have to tell them about the feasibility i am the competent person i am the person enough to continue your research i am person i am the person who can get your funds and 100% use them to get the results what you are looking for i mean not only the positive results means the agenda the aim the objective of your research so feasibility as i was talking i have to write i have to mention about institutions about my uh, you know uh, research uh, experiences about my team about my associations about my collaborations everything what facilities my institutes have uh, what facilities my institute have those everything comes under feasibility i have to write in the proposal then only they will get convinced na then only i can uh, you know convince the funding agency then your competence as i am telling about your experience you have to tell them how much experience you have and see it is not like you know the freshers should not apply for the grants only freshers you know come up with the grants good grants i am telling you guys so competency means your passion your idea your execution your methodology this all comes under your competence then on based on those things only they will find out you know they will assess you they will review your uh, you know idea okay this person has real potential so you know if this person has real potential to conduct our research okay, this, right. this person has real potential to you know grow with this fund okay let's go and give this fund to this guy okay then work plan to complete it means the methodology very important part you have to write the entire methodology i'll come to the methodology part uh, in the later slides definitely and then very important part is stepping stone to the new opportunities means the novel ideas what novelty your idea has novelty means new opportunities new things what new your idea has new means it is not necessary to get with the new ideas always new it could be the execution also it could be the plan also it could be the methods also it could be the instrument also it could be anything it could be the research design also new research design new plan it could be anything it is not necessary that you have the new aim you have the new uh, you know uh, uh, plan or you have the new thing okay it is not necessary so you can have those things and you can definitely look into this and you can go for the grants so that is the purpose of writing a research proposal 
because we have to convince the funding agencies on these topics these uh, you know areas so they will think okay everything is mentioned perfectly now let's review it okay and let's give the grant right so these are the purposes to write a research proposal now next thing is very important selection of the research idea previously we have selected the grant now everything is done feasibility check availability check time check everything is done even i got the purpose of writing a grant but how to get the research idea suppose icmr has come up with the pain management they they i mean recently uh, last month they have opened the you know uh, grants for pain management come up with the transitional medicine for pain management they have written one topic the theme transitional medicines for pain management it is, it is a wide area what would be the great research area in pain management and transitional medicine how to search how to select the research idea there are multiple options to search the research idea let me tell you how to search the research idea so first thing is literature the best part if they are asking transitional medicine for pain management go to the literature okay turn to the literature that pertain to your area of interest like if you are in the pain management search for the pain management and transitional medicines and go to the papers go to the future aspects go to the uh, you know future implications and check what they have written what what have not done yet okay what have not done yet in this area check for that in the literature go through the literature entirely i'll say put your you know uh, you know in the research i uh, forgot to mention in the slide but it is very important thing you know in the research you spend your 60 per, 60 to 80% time i uh, think someone is speaking shankar thapa please uh, okay so 60 to 80% time goes in planning okay your 60 to 80% time goes in planning and you need only 20% time to perform your research okay you need only 20% to perform your research okay remember this so that's very important so spend your good time in the literature search i'll tell you later why literature is very important here it is for the selection of research idea go to the literature select you know your topic like pain management transitional medicine read the future implications read the uh, you know future ideas read the future work okay so you know read the literature properly then after the literature you can get the ideas from discussions also discussions means ideas from the courses you are attending you read the books you find out okay just always think why it is happening what has not happened if i am in heart heart failure okay uh, i should look for the reversal uh, you know i should look for the uh, you know cardiomyopathy reversal drugs why it is not reversing why ph is not reversible why uh, how ph can be reverse you know i should think why it is not happening if i am in something if i am in some domain i should always think why it is not happening i should always keep why you know there are there, there is one thing there is one very uh, you know solid rule in six sigma i mean i'm i'm just you know uh, taking you away from this uh, research grant proposal idea but i'll tell you very important part this is one of the six sigma idea six sigma management that is six sigma rules like whenever you want to get whenever you want to get any idea whenever you want to look into the growth whenever you look want to look into the marketing you should ask you five why five why means you if you want to conclude something you have to ask why five times at least five times suppose i am telling pain management and transitional medicine why then you will get some answer then again ask why that then you will get an answer then ask why that until and unless you are not getting that conclusion don't leave it okay so wherever you are working 
in the hospital, in the institution, in the, uh, uh, you know, any uh, career agency, any course you are attending, wherever you are, just find out the gaps, why it is happening and why it has not happened. If you are come up, coming up with that why, if you, are, if you have started coming with that why, you will be becoming a great researcher, I'm telling you guys. Question everything. Okay, question everything. So first thing is literature. Come back to the selection of research idea. First thing, you will get the great ideas from literature. Then the discussions. Ideas from the courses you are attending. Research discussions from uh, you know, seminars, conferences. Seminars and conferences are the best thing to get the research uh, you know, ideas. They discuss the latest things. They discuss the latest ideas. They discuss the uh, you know, future implications, what have not done, what could be done. So those, where, from there, you can get the great ideas in your you know, domain. Then the media. Media nowadays is very important. Science magazines, news, Instagram. See, if you are using perfectly, find out what's happening. You, you, you know, follow the science pages, follow the journals pages, LinkedIn. Go to those things, go to the media, social media, and you will get a lot of ideas. Okay, then the social needs. As Dr. Uh, you know, Sohan was discussing about that, that we should always look into the social needs. That's very important. Okay, like we got COVID pandemic. After COVID pandemic, you won't believe Indian research has, Indian research proposals has hiked by 300%. Indian research proposals have hiked by 300%, guys. Can you believe it? Everyone is coming and doing some research, whether it is survey, repurpose drugs, okay, and new drugs, new medicines, new vaccines, anything. Okay. KP studies, any, I mean, a lot of research ideas have come up. AI, artificial intelligence, and, uh, you know, sanitation, and, you know, prevention, management, Thousands of the things, pathophysiology, viral disease, uh, viral uh, you know disease research. Thousands of things have come up. So these pandemics, epidemics, social deformities like you know uh, our waterborne disease, airborne diseases. These are the social deformities, social needs. These gives us the great ideas to go for the research. You just have to think of. You just have to look into these areas. Okay, and you will get the idea. I'm very, very sure you will get the idea. Okay, and then very importantly, if now you have selected the idea, okay, you have, you sorry, you got the idea, what now, what next? See, look here, look at this. Okay, wait, 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 wait. wait. I will just take the pointer. Okay, so look at this. Once you have a topic, develop a good strategies, strategy for addressing all the relevant component. Then you will go to the good research, okay? Now, now look at this. Defining the research questions. How to define the research question, guys? I'm so sorry, you are speaking, someone is speaking. Please put off your mics so you know we can, okay. So see, look at this. Defining your research question, okay. Defining the research question. You got the research idea, research idea you got. But now you have to refine it to a question. That will be your title of the research, that will be the aim of your research, that will be the major objective of your research. You have to define the question, that's very important. Okay, after idea, you have to come to the research question or questions like objectives. Okay, so what is exactly research question or research objective? What do you wish to accomplish? Suppose I'm giving an example here. I'm working on heart failure. Thousands of the research articles are there. Many areas are there to cover. Heart failure patients are usually elderly, right? And in those patients, what we look for? We look for, see, heart failure has no reversible drugs. Heart failure has no reversible treatment till date. You know, new drugs are really promising, but they are also, you know, to a certain, a certain extent. So the major problem with heart failure patient is readmissions and, you know, reoccurrence of the symptoms frequently 
so those are the things that means everything is affecting their quality of life at the end you know quality of the life so question if i thinking if i am thinking of a research question i i must think of i must think of like what is my research question correctly like suppose uh, you know the latest drugs uh, you know in the latest drug if i look into uh, there is uh, something the combination of naproxen uh, inhibitors and uh, you know valsartan arbs there is a combination called uh, you know valsartan and uh, valsartan and sacubitril combination okay so that combination arni we call it arni okay a r n i that is the small form okay that is the short form of uh, uh, you know naproxen inhibitors and arbs okay so if i am defining a research question i should be very very specific what i want to accomplish i want to come uh, you know i want to accomplish like if the sacubitril valsartan combination can improve the health related quality of life in heart failure patients that should be my research question that's that is what i want to accomplish okay that is what i want to accomplish i want to complete at the end so that is my research question okay so what should be the research question and how we should get the research question how we should refine it how we should define it okay based on feasibility again time scope and budget restrict your idea do not cover many things restrict your idea based on the time scope and budget reasonable probability of success achievability i told you in the last slide it is very important to look into the achievability if you can achieve it if there is a reasonable probability of success of this research question you have to measure your question on these parameters these are the parameters where you have to measure your question feasibility in sense of time scope and budget reasonable probability of success of your idea of your research question whether your research question is significant or not whether your uh, your research question is novel or not novel means as i told you novel means novel does not mean that your research question will be novel research question means maybe it is uh, you know something in the process something in the implementation something in the testing something it could be anything which is new which is something you know hatke from others right and then the most important part here is beware of scope creep scope creep is a word you know which defines like if you are not foresighting okay if you cannot think for a long term you cannot do a research at all you have to think of the entire timeline if your project is 3 years duration project has the 3 year duration you have to think of the entire 3 years scope creep means like suppose i am you know right now i have a very big research question i have i am including european agencies i am including uh, american agencies i am including japanese agencies and i am including indian agencies indian sides to do the research suppose after 6 months indian and australian relations are not good indian japan relations are not good indian american relations are not good things will change guidelines will change my idea will be pissed off in between right so i have to think of the minimum collaboration program minimum collaboration minimum feasibility program if anything change at least this thing will be collaborated this thing will be going on for permanent scope creep means we have to think of the scope of my idea for long term not only the short term okay if anything changes guidelines changes if any relationship changes between the collaborators between the sites between the countries between the agencies suppose our dcgri this uh, you know drug control journal of india which usually monitor all the clinical trials came up with the new idea came up with the new rules that okay uh, after tonight 8 am i after tonight 8 pm these things will not be valid and you have to come up with the new idea these rules will not be valid and they have come up with the new idea fda has come up with the new rules what you will do so you have to be very much aware of the scope okay that term is called scope creep your idea must be aware beware of the scope creep okay then only you know you should 
get the perfect research question, right? Your research questions would be measured in feasibility, reasonable probability of success, significant and novel, beware of scope creep. And very important part, your research idea must be smart. Your research idea must be smart. Okay, I know many of you must be knowing the smart, but I'll tell you, okay, I'll not, uh, you know, spend much time here now. Look at the smart. Okay, look at the smart here. See, smart means what? S stands for specific. Okay, your idea must be specific. Suppose why I'm telling about the specific idea. If I am looking for, you know, if I am looking for something, uh, suppose clinical characteristics of a disease, of maybe cancer, of maybe heart attack, or, you know, the etiology of heart failure or etiology of heart attack, if I'm looking for, I should be specific. I cannot go for the entire world. If I am in South India, I should be specific first. Like, okay, I am going to check the etiology. Of the heart heart. Okay, I should be looking for the etiology of heart failure or heart attack in South Indian population. I should be specific about my eligibility. I should be specific about my inclusion and exclusion criteria. That's very important. If I'm not specific about my population, about my site, about my center, about my study design, if I'm telling I can do randomized control trial in a, you know, uh, in a primary care center, not possible at all. You need tertiary care center where you get a lot of patients. Very tough, very, very tough. So specific things you have to check. Your idea must be specific, okay? Your idea must be measurable. Measurable means, measurable means it should be, you know, smart, measurable, I mean, specific and measurable. Measurable means like, okay, quantitative. Okay, quantitative. Measurable here means the quantitative. Quantitative means in the sense of budget, in the sense of population, number of population, number of teammates, everything. And the results, what I'm going to get, measurable means it's not, it should not be out of thinking. Okay, my targets, my results, my achievements, at the end, what are my outcomes must not be out of measure. Okay, that should be measurable. Okay, what I'm looking for. Then achievable. Achievability, I'm talking about every slide, I'm talking about achievability. It's very important. If you cannot achieve, don't go for the funds. Don't go for the research grants. Your first thing, you know, like with your time, achievability is very important. Your idea must be achievable. Then relevant. It should be relevant to your scope, discipline, intentions, research intentions. Then only it would be perfect. Time bound. Of course, it should be, uh, you know, within the timelines. You have to finish it within the timelines. You have to follow the timelines. You have to, you know, take care of the timelines. If you cannot take care of the timelines, you are not eligible to, uh, you know, write a grant. You are not eligible to conduct the research at all. It should be time bound for everyone. It's very important to be time bound. Okay. So your idea, your research question must be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound along with those measures. Your idea must match all of these things. Then only, I'm very sure, these are the hacks of writing a grant. If you are, see, if you're just coming up with the idea, raw idea, and you are writing a grant, you are not measuring your idea. You are not, uh, you know, you're calculating your idea. If you're not analyzing your idea on these parameters, you are doing injustice with yourself because you are wasting your time, you are wasting your knowledge, you are wasting your efforts, you are wasting the resources, everything. First, if you, are, if you want a great idea, you should think of these things. You should think of these parameters. You should measure these parameters. Okay, guys, then must be. Research question examples I'll give you. There are two types, weak research questions and strong research questions, as I'm telling, when you don't measure these things and when you measure these things, 
when you take care of those parameters and when you don't take care of those parameters look at the weak research questions will holding workshops reduce the school violence what kind of workshops i'm not sure okay i'm not sure what kind of workshops you are telling what do you exactly need what is your target what is your target population what is the methodology what is the duration of workshop how many workshop in a month nothing is there how you will go for this your question is not time bound your question has no time duration your question does not mention or does not you know uh, sound towards measurability achievability nothing you are just telling will holding workshop reduce the school violence what kind of workshop you are talking about first question so this is a weak research question then will counseling reduce the mortality in heart attack patients what kind of counseling patient counseling doctor counseling pharmacist counseling or patient attender counseling and in that also what kind of counseling drug counseling management counseling water or weight counseling lifestyle counseling what counseling you are looking for you have to be very specific what kind of heart attack patients heart attack patients also have multiple things you know uh, heart attack patients with treatment without treatment on aspirin uh, off aspirin multiple things are there you have to be specific so these are weak questions if you look at the strong research questions you will think that re these strong research questions have been measured on each and every parameters these are specific relevant these are specific relevant measured achievable will one hour hands on car seat training sessions reduce the child motor vehicle injuries in mumbai we are talking about mumbai population we are talking about one hour hands on car seat training sessions and we are targeting our outcome which is child motor vehicle injuries will it be helpful in reducing that we are very specific relevant site everything is mentioned everything is targeted everything is measured everything is every parameter it has gone through next question the same question the weak question i have turned into the uh, you know strong question will patient counseling on medication non adherence improve the outcomes in health in heart attack patients after angioplasty now look at the topic patient counseling on medication non adherence improve the outcomes in heart attack patients after the angioplasty so after angioplasty patients must be on medicines including dual antiplatelet therapy and there those until dual antiplatelet therapy would be you know clopidogrel aspirin along with the statins and all so if patient is not adherence not adhere to the medications he has a good chance he has a high chance of getting heart attack again getting myocardial again myocardial infarction again so these are the differences you can make out with the weak research questions and strong research questions this is one of the parameter of evaluating your research grant by the reviewing committee okay i mean we will discuss the review process entire review process tomorrow but i'm just telling you these are the very important hacks okay now look into the next part components of a research grant proposal very important part okay components of a research proposal grant now we understand like what is the purpose of research grants uh, how to find out the research question okay and uh, uh, how it should be okay what are the parameters it should uh, you know go through then we have the research question how to write how to make up the proposal on this and what should be the components of a research grant proposal so let's go for this l first we have discussed about the title then we should come up with all the part okay abstract is the end part executive summary or abstract is the end part okay you should write the abstract or executive summary at the end okay actually executive summary is something different this is just summary or abstract you should write this at the end okay i mean this is when you look at the proposal this is the second thing but when you start writing this is the last thing of the proposal and this is the last thing of the research paper also okay now i'm not talking about the research proposals only this is the last thing to write in the research papers on also abstract 
you cannot write abstract without writing methodology expected outcomes or everything abstract is the last thing to write okay so first title then abstract then accomplishments what are the accomplishments accomplishments like you know abbreviations keywords and very importantly about your institution about your team about you how many publications you have how many index publications you have those things those accomplishments uh, so sorry i think somebody is speaking okay by mistake i did something wrong okay so you know accomplishments we have to mention about the team about my achievements about my team's achievements about my experiences everything i have to write here along with those uh, you know keywords and uh, what we say you know uh, abbreviations and all those are accomplishments then the most important part background and introduction it's a kind of justification it's a kind of justification or like you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm you know giving a good background for the research idea this is like you know background or introduction is something you know uh, the significance of the problem the problem the significance of the problem how significant the problem is that must be mentioned in your background or introduction the epidemiology okay the research questions what we are looking for okay and then literature review to support your idea literature review to support your idea very important part okay see background will also come from the literature review only but that will be the significance of the problem and what you are going to do okay your research questions then literature review means supporting your idea what are the literature which are supporting or anticipating both your idea okay then novelty or innovation what's new in your idea it could be your title itself it could be your idea itself it could be your uh, you know execution it could be your theoretical method it could be procedure it could be instrument anything whatever is new whatever you are you know how how you are filling the gap in science how you are filling the gap in your area what has not been done what new you are going to try that's important okay and then aims and objectives like your uh, you know what you are going to accomplish and then the entire methodology i'm going to you know discuss this methodology part separately so the methodology methodology means you have to discuss about the site you have to discuss about the population you have to discuss about the ethical considerations you have to discuss about the aesthetic statistical methods you have to discuss about the you know study design everything will come under you know execution everything will come under methodology instrumentations everything will come under methodology then expected outcomes what is your hypothesis what you are expecting at the end of this research i mean it may fulfill it may not be fulfilled but you have to get the expected outcomes importantly very important what you are exactly looking for what you are exactly expecting from your research and then limitations of the study what are the limitations of the studies what you cannot perform now okay and based on the limitations only future money based on the future uh, you know based on the uh, this uh, uh, limitations of the study only future aspects if any what you are looking for after this research what you are telling your fellow researchers what you are telling the re uh, readers of your paper of your publications of your research report what they will get for the future how they can proceed it in the future or if you want to proceed it after this research question if you have any further idea to uh, you know continue the research how you are going to do that okay so you have to mention those future aspects and then timelines very importantly i'll going to discuss these timelines also very important timelines how to discuss uh, you know how to fit uh, how to set your timelines and all then the institutional support again you have to write about the institutional support or institutional facilities okay in accomplishments we were talking about us about our team about our working facilities but here institutional support how we are getting the support from institute what are the facilities available at institute like i am talking about kmc i am one i am writing about the kmc it is like it is giving me the this is my backbone this is my backbone where i am working i'm working in the hospital 
with 2600 plus beds with the 6 lakh plus patient input in a year that means i have a good database that means i have a good database to conduct a research that will give an i you know that will give a good scope to the reviewers whoever is reviewing my uh, you know application whoever is reviewing my uh, research proposal they will understand oh this idea is from this idea is from kmc it is very much feasible kmc has all the facilities kmc has all a great patient input 6 lakh plus patients in a year 2600 bedded hospital what else we need right i mean what i'm telling is that you need to put down you need to mention all the institution benefits or institutional highlights okay what you are going to get from the institution how your institute is going to support you then at the end you have to mention about the budget of entire thing budget of execution budget of the people budget of the team budget for travel budget for uh, you know all the all the things whatever you need budget for everything okay you have to set a budget and your proposal is done now title of the project summary or abstract accomplishments background or introduction literature review innovation aims and objectives methodology expected outcomes limitations future aspects timelines institutional support and budget at the end to complete the research proposal i mean to complete the research for the entire duration that is a component that are the components of a research grant proposal okay these research grant proposals i have taken from you know icmr nih mixed you know i have made this 14 uh, you know top components from dst dbt csir icmr and nih these are the almost mandatory part for a research proposal okay so next uh okay so someone is my con again sachin no problem that's fine so see now next is importance of the literature review i was telling why i'm emphasizing on the literature review it's very important because literature review is needed to support and validate your idea support means we have checked how literature review is very important in selecting the idea right in selecting the idea next if we want to validate our idea that also we have to go to the literature review whether our idea is novel we have to check the literature whether such ideas are already implemented such ideas are already executed such research are already conducted okay if not then what is the loopholes what are the gaps what we are doing if it is correct or not if it is feasible or not everything we have to check we have to validate our idea we have to validate our novelty we have to validate our innovation and there are multiple sources of uh, Uh, you know literature academic literature grey literature reports review papers original papers direct papers okay so there are multiple sources and if you want to search the literature there is google scholar uh, you know sci hub there is i mean i'm so sorry sci hub is <laughs> illegal okay sci hub is illegal guys okay so there is i mean google scholar uh, there is pubmed there is scopus there is web of science there are multiple other things sinhal okay there are a lot of uh, you know Uh, and cochrane library there are multiple resources you know multiple uh, databases to search the literature the multiple resources okay okay so i'll keep this on mute okay so there are multiple sources to find out the literature and then you have to based on the literature as i'm telling you have to find out the research gaps so be a critical thinker when you are searching the literature review when you are going through a literature you should be a critical thinker okay you should find out the loopholes you should find out the gaps and then yes your literature review literature review is a part of proposal writing so literature review shows that how you can integrate and synthesize the existing literature with your idea with your proposal okay so literature review has its own importance in proposal writing because literature review shows the reviewers that how you are integrating and synthesizing the existing literature with your proposal okay 
with your proposal so gray literature i'll tell you what is gray literature gray literature is which is not been which has not been published and which has not been gone through which has not gone through the review process gray literature is actually which has not gone through the review literature i mean uh, review process there are original papers review papers anything what you are submitting to the journals it goes through it actually you know it goes through the uh, proper review process okay there is a proper review process and after review process only they accept to publish into the journal publish in the journal right if it is not underwent the review process and if it is like directly published okay without the review process like the newspapers government reports or uh, you know some reports in the published in websites without review process that is called gray literature gray literature means there is no validation review process is called as validation for the literature validation of any report validation of any research if it is not uh, you know underwent the review process that is called as gray literature okay academic literature is uh, nothing but like you know direct research papers direct research from the labs direct uh, you know the books books are actually secondary literature but books are also uh, you know a kind of uh, you know coming from you know scientific books are coming from the uh, primary literature so academic literatures are you know the original original research papers uh, review papers books and you know the journals those are the academic literature okay so next thing literature review now let's come to the methodology very important part of your proposal so as i told you there is very important you know uh, a rule in the six sigma here also there is a very important rule as per the six sigma there is very important rule in methodology of a research proposal how will you answer your research question suppose you have the research question how you are going to conduct that how you are going to execute it okay how you are going to execute that how you are answering how you are going to answer your research question that is called methodology okay that is called methodology so 5w and 1h 5w and 1h who who is going to conduct it who is going to sponsor it who will be in the team who will be the perfect match for this who who is going to conduct it the person the team the organization what what are the outcomes what are the objectives what are the what is the process when when to complete it how to distribute the timelines how to distribute the task okay where to conduct it where it will be conducted where the research will be conducted why it will be conducted means the hypothesis outcomes what you are looking for accomplishments what you are looking for so you should keep these things in your mind when you are writing a research methodology you should keep these things 5 w's and 1 h who what when where why and how if you understand these things you are pro in research writing you are pro in proposal writing you are pro in uh, you know everything i'm telling you 5 w's and 1 h this is the important part of methodology who will conduct it who will be the team uh, who will support it who will be the sponsor what is the execution plan what is going to be when timelines it reflects timelines where site of the research why outcomes how execution okay how execution of this research grant okay so that's very very important to cover up these things in when you are asking for research methodology okay now let's see what is exactly the what are the exact components of research methodology look at this okay what are the exact components of a research methodology of a research grant proposal first thing research design and facility what is the research design whether it's a retrospective prospective cohort study randomized control trial case control study epidemiological uh, study or uh, guys please switch off your mics here you are disturbing a lot okay so research study design and facility study design what is a study design see i'm talking about pharmaceutical sciences now whether it is animal studies 
whether it is a PKPD studies, okay? What kind of studies you are doing, whether it is a, you know, uh, neuroscience disease, whether it's a neutrocytical disease, what kind of study and what is the design, whether it's a case control, whether it is cohort, whether it is randomized control trial, whether it is an epidemiological trial, whether it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, cross-sectional studies, what kind of study design you are following, retrospective, prospective, observational, interventional, anything it could be, you have to find out the exact study design. Then facilities, where you are going to conduct. The second thing here is very important, sample size. If you are doing a clinical research or non-clinical research, animal research, sample size is very important. How many animals you have to take for uh, you know, the research? How many people you have to take for the research? How many people should be there in the research? If it is time bound also, it is important how many people you have recruited. So the sample size calculation is very important in I mean, in all non-time bound studies and time bound studies, there is no need to you know, calculate the sample size, but there will be a sample size. Sample size is always mandatory in all kinds of research. Okay, whether it is qualitative research, quantitative research, observational research, interventional research, animal studies, uh, laboratory studies, whether clinical research, anything it could be. But sample size is mandatory. Okay, and that is a part of methodology. You should have one sample size. Then population. Population means what kind of population you are targeting. Suppose I'm doing a heart failure uh, study. Okay, so whether I have to take men, women, all the genders, uh, what is the age limit, uh, you know, 18 to 60, or, you know, more than 60, more than 65, under 80, whatever, you know, whether only heart failure, heart failure with other comorbidities. I mean, I have to set an extensive inclusion criteria if I'm doing a research. My inclusion criteria, you know, uh, if I have a very restricted inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria, my research and results and accomplishments what I'm looking for will be perfect, damn good. You know why? Because my research will be completely restricted. Why? Okay, one question here. Why we go for always, why we, you know, support randomized control trials? Why we keep all the randomized control trials on the top of the literature? Like, okay, if I'm reading a literature, a randomized control trial means that will give you the perfect results. You can, you know, believe on this blindly. Why? Because randomized control trials are completely restricted. The randomization is blind. Okay. The randomization is blind for population. Their inclusion exclusion criteria are very tight. They're very restricted. Okay. That's why it is important to find out your population, your inclusion and exclusion criteria must be great. And this be, of course, as uh, you know, bias free. Okay, understand guys? So it's very important. And then after population, it is very important to find out the implementation and ethical considerations. Implementation means what are the facilities you are going to implement? Whether it is a laboratory study, whether you need some, uh, you know, uh, instruments, procedural things. And if you have the correct ethical approval, if it is animal study, you have to take the ethical approval from animal ethics committee. If you are conducting on any kind of, if there is an involvement of any kind of human, it should be approved from the human ethical committee. Whether it is a retrospective study, whether you are talking to a human directly or indirectly or not talking at all, but you are involving the human in your research, your study must be approved by ethical committee, institutional ethical committee, independent ethical committee, anything, but it must be approved by ethical committee. Otherwise you are violating the human rights. You are violating the rules of Helsinki. You are violating the rules of, uh, you know, all these FDA, WHO and you know, all the academies, ICH guide, ICH GCP guidelines, you are, you are violating those things. So your research must be considered, you know, it must be approved by ethical committee at all. Understand guys, important, remember this. And you have to mention those things in the components of methodology. Then last thing, data collection and statistics. Data collection means how you're going to collect the data. What data you are collecting? Suppose, you know, I'm doing a research, then I'm collecting anthropometric data. 
I'm collecting medication, non you know, I'm collecting, you know, uh, history of the patient. I'm collecting medication history, medicinal history. You know, I'm collecting all the disease history and, you know, smoking, all the social habits. What kind of data I'm, I have to collect that I have to define? Okay, relatives history, family history. What, what things I need to collect? Latest medications, latest sign and symptoms, management criteria. What, based on my objectives, based on my aim, I have to find out what kind of data I have to collect. And you have to create the data collection forms that is called CRFs. Okay, if you are doing clinical research, if you are out of the clinical research, definitely you have to look into the, you know, you have to look into the things, what are mandatory for the data collection. Data collection forms are everywhere, whether you are in the clinical research, whether you are in the laboratory research, pharmaceutical research, engineering research, you have the data collection forms, data collection websites, anything, wherever. Those are called CRFs, case report forms. Okay, case collection forms, data collection forms. You must have that. And your statistical considerations, what you are going to apply, what kind of tests you are going to apply, what kind of softwares you are going to apply. This means you have to mention in the methodology. I'm working on SPSS, I'm working on SES, I'm working on Prisma. So whatever you are going to apply, however you are going to you know, get the results or get the analysis done out of your paper, out of your research, at the end, you have to mention it. At least tentative. At least tentative, you have to mention. Okay, then only you can proceed. So these are the major components of the methodology. And you know, methodology is one part of the proposal. And it's important part, you have to include all these things in the methodology of a proposal. Or maybe if you're if you are looking for a you know a research uh, proposal or you know research uh, what we say it here, I forgot the word. Research protocol. If you're writing a protocol also, the same thing will be coming under the methodology. Okay, these would be the components of the methodology, even for the research protocol, for the proposal also. Okay, this is very, very important. Okay, guys. So now next thing here. While writing the methodology, you should remember these things. Important hacks, important points. You should remember these things. Very important. Okay, what are these things? Methods must be well thought and comprehensive. Your methodology would be clearly written out. Your methodology would be clearly, should be clearly written out in the paper, on the paper. Okay, it should be clearly written out what you are going to do, how you are going to do, what are the timelines, everything very clearly. What you are going to include process, or uh, you know, instrument, laboratory, uh, population, everything must be comprehensively written. Then only you can impress or convince your agency to give you the budget, okay? Very importantly. So first research design, you have to uh, you know, find out the correct research design, whether it is a qualitative, quantitative or mixed methods, or whether it's a cross-sectional you know, study or longitudinal survey maybe primary, secondary data analysis, whatever you are selecting, that is depending on you, okay? As I told you, what is the research design and how you have to select? You have to select the appropriate research design based on your aims and objective, okay? Based on your aims and objectives, you have to find out the qualitative, quantitative, or any kind of research design, retrospective, prospective, interventional, observational, anything, okay? So if your research design is you know, primary, what are the tools you are using? If you have done the pilot study, if you have done the validity statistics, if you have done the validation of your process, if you have done the validation of your instrument, if you have done the validation of your questionnaire, anything, it must be done beforehand. Your pilot study must be done beforehand before writing the proposal. Because how you are going to support otherwise your you know, primary tool, your primary research, how you're going to support primary research. Primary research here, guys, means don't be confused. Primary research means whatever you are going to do for first time. If you are applying some questionnaire for first time, you have to validate it before, you know, applying into the proper population. You have to validate it. If you are, you know, trying to do something new and trying to find out, trying to go for, you know, grants, then you should prove it. You should have this validated idea. So that validated idea will come after pilot study, okay? So you should have the pilot study very, very importantly in your hand, okay? Then logical and sequential procedures must be there. If you are 
procedures are not logical, you are not going to justify your research proposal, your research at all. You're not going to justify your research at all. Okay. Important and inclusion exclusion criteria. Is is very interesting. Uh, guys, you can uh, write the feedbacks later or maybe that's okay. And But please uh, don't speak. Mm, you are... Uh, okay, no problem. That's fine. So, uh, you know, your procedures, it must be logical and in a sequence, how you are going to perform the entire thing, how you are going to, uh, you know, get the population, then how you are applying the test, how you are, uh, you know, if it is inter interventional study, how you are, you know, distributing the medicine, how you are collecting the outcomes, how you are, uh, you know, uh, following up the patient, everything should be in the sequence, how many years you are following. And then at the end, what you are going to analyze, what you are going to get, what would be the outcomes, those everything you have to mention clearly in your methodology. Otherwise, uh, it is just you are not justifying with your research idea. You are not justifying your you know, research proposal at all. Okay. And then inclusion exclusion criteria, participants, as I told you, population is very important to justify and tools, instrumentations, equipments, whatever you are using, proper methodology along with the proper name company or anything, you have to do it. Yes, if you are, uh, yes, uh, Mrs. Smita Das, if you are going to, uh, you know, conduct any primary research, which has not been done yet, then you have to do a pilot study before writing a proposal. Yes, it is, it is necessary. But if it is including the human uh, part, if it is including the human part, human participants, you have to get the ethical approval for the, uh, you know, pilot study also. Okay, that's important. So this is about the methodology. When you are writing the methodology, you should keep these things in your mind, guys. You should keep these things in mind. Okay, then next part, I'll come to the next part. Mm. Okay, some, someone has the mic on, no problem. So fine, next thing. Teams and collaborations, why? Why these are important, guys, one sec, I'll just take one. Teams and collaborations. We are talking about teams and collaborations here. Very important part. You know, I'll I'll show the present. I'll show the slide. Before showing the slide, I'll tell you one incidence. Not mine. One of uh, you know our collaborator. They got some research, uh, you know, proposal uh, from the agency. Like they they were invited from one uh, organization to write a grant proposal. Okay, they thought like uh, we are not collaborating with anyone. We'll get all 1.5 crore ka grant and we'll conduct the study. Understand my thing. They thought we will not collaborate with anyone. We will just do it in our facility. They were from a very restricted domain. They were not expertise in our domain, but they thought we, they will not include us or they will not include anyone from, you know, like uh, whatever is required. They thought they will do it by themselves. They will just take the necessary help from ours, you know, our end from others end, but they will not include us in the grant writing. They thought like this. At the end, the grant proposal was not accepted. They have been invited by the agencies. They're a very great professor, very, you know, great person, great researcher, but they thought not to collaborate, not to team up with others. Okay. So they did not get the grant. Now I will justify how. See, research is a collaborative teamwork. Research is a collaborative teamwork. Look at this. This is a multidisciplinary approach. If I am thinking about, I am a cardiology person. Okay. If I am thinking about finding the genetics or genetic deformities or genetic modulation or, you know, uh, gene sequencing in cardiomyopathies in heart failure patients, suppose, if I want to know, I have to include the genetics person. I have to include the genetics person. I have to include the genetics department. I cannot do it. I have to include the biochemistry department maybe for all the tests also to collect the samples and share. Right. 
I cannot do this my, by myself. Maybe I'm looking, see, my, my proposal is, my idea is like finding the gene sequencing of heart failure patients or cardiomyopathy myopathy patients. But I cannot do it without the help of genetic people. If I am being greedy, if I think like, okay, I will keep all the funds, I will not share, I will just approach them for a help on little money or something, you know, I'll not give them the credentials. Here, the thing is not about money. Here, the thing is about credentials. If you are being greedy about credentials and money in the research and you are not collaborating or you are not teaming up with the right team, with the right people, with the right, uh, you know, uh, multidisciplinary approaches, then you are again not justifying your research idea because you need a team. If it is, if your idea is multidisciplinary, if your idea is a collaborative work, you should include all the teams. Suppose I am looking for the pharmacological part, drug delivery in, you know, drug delivery or phallodipine patch, phallodipine patch for hypertension patients. I need someone from pharmaceutics to develop that patch. It is not my work. I am writing the proposal. I have the idea, but I need the collaboration. I cannot go ahead without the collaboration. I have to understand that. Okay. So all who are writing the proposal should think of writing the proposal or before writing the proposal about collaborative work. If they are thinking of a collaborative work, they should, they must collaborate. They must have a right team. They must have a good team. They must have that multidisciplinary approach. They should definitely choose the appropriate people to perform the tasks. Okay. If I think, okay, I'm the person, I'm the PI, I will end the, I have, uh, you know, the work for 10 people. I'm not hiring the 10 people. I'm just hiring three people and giving all the tasks. You know, I need, to, I need people to collect data. I need people to collect data. Okay, someone is speaking, no problem. Guys, please mute your mics. So I am having two people only and I am giving them all the works. They are only collecting the data. They are only entering the data. They are only analyzing the data. They are only doing everything. This is not at all done. This is not at all. You are not justifying with the people. You are overburdening them. Okay, you are overburdening them and this is not helpful. This will influence your research outcome. Okay, so two things very important. Always, always keep your collaborators and associations happy and keep them in good terms. Give them the proper credentials. Give them, okay, give them the proper credentials. And very important part, don't be greedy in research. Don't overburden thy staff. Otherwise, your research outcomes will be definitely influenced. Okay. That's why we have the budget. That's why we have the budget to get the staff, to get the people, to get. Of course, I know there are the loopholes, there are the people, uh, you know, the grant agencies also, they tell, okay, why you are hiring five people, just hire four people or three people and do this research and all. It is there. It is there. I'm not saying that it's not there, but you should be very very much clear when you're writing in the research proposal that we need this much grant we need this much you know we need this much you know team this we this much assistant these many assistants these many research associates we need these okay you should be very clear then determining the timelines very important last two three slides guys determining the timelines very very important timelines and budgets are very important part okay what we are going to discuss now so timelines means the proposed timelines, proposed timelines, first of all, about your research proposal writing, how much time it will take in writing the research proposal. Okay. You should be before deadline. If you are crossing the deadline, you are going to lose something big. You are going to lose the opportunity. You know, you're going to lose the opportunity. Similarly, if I am, you know, I miss my, uh, you know, time for income tax returns. I lost the money. Simple. That was the opportunity. There was the opportunity on 31st July. If I am missing the timeline, that means I am losing my income tax return. Similarly, if I am missing the opportunity, this is all about opportunity. Okay. 
if i am missing the deadline if everything is perfect suppose the project is feasible project is going to help me in my career project is uh, you know uh, i have a good time to allot i have uh, you know good feasibility everything is there but if i am not able to write the proposal within time what is the use of that id that means i am i'm losing the opportunity i'm losing a grant right so it's important to fix the timelines determine how much time must be allotted if it needs 5 hours you should keep 5 hours you should not think of okay i can do it in 4 hours okay if one test if one data collection form needs 15 minutes to fill then you should count 15 minutes you should not think okay uh, today i am writing in 15 minutes and next day i will fill in 10 minutes not at all it will influence you should not go beyond the time limits you should not you know restrict your time also okay keep always these deadlines in the important form okay timelines must be the time must be allotted properly batch the different task to complete overall so define the task in your team divide the tasks divide the dead and fix the deadlines for everyone break them down further like okay research assistant will collect the data research associate will you know enter the data and they will you know uh, review the data okay divide the task break down it and timelines are very important so to fix the timelines in research in research proposals everywhere in the research even in the finances even in the you know management gantt chart is very important gantt chart is very important and i am introducing this gantt chart to you guys to understand this is the gantt chart this is the important thing to keep in your proposal to keep in your protocol everywhere it is mandatory you have to write about the timelines like okay january 2013 to january 2014 preparation of thesis proposal february 2014 i will do preparation presentation of the thesis proposal preparation and submission of thesis application to ethics committee march 2014 to june 2014 data collection will be from june 2015 to november 2015 data analysis will be done from september 2015 to november 2015 report writing will be done december 2015 to march 2016 submission of the thesis will be april 2016 may 2016 will be publication of the submission of the thesis okay so this is like proper timelines you have to keep guys proper timelines you have to keep then only you will be successful in fixing your timelines and to adhere with your timelines okay gantt chart is very important okay so i'll not take much time i think it's over or it so last thing budget estimation it's very important budget estimation so when you are estimating the proposing budget when you are proposing a budget you have to you have to keep in mind these few things you have to keep in mind these few things all inclusive guys remember focus here this last 5 10 minutes proposed budget all inclusive you should not think that if i cut down two uh, you know uh, two research assistants or two research associates from the from the budget then you know uh, the less budget will attract or less budget will convince the team less budget will convince the funding agency not at all if you are not including everything that means you are overburdening you are you are going to overburden your staff you are going to cut down the cost somewhere you are going to compromise the research okay so the proposed budget should include everything all inclusive means research assistant salary research associate salary staff salary and you know whatever is is needed you know the uh, instruments or computer laptop travel uh, and you know the reagents whatever is required you should keep everything in your budget you should keep everything you should not restrict your budget when you are writing a budget when you are estimating the budget you should not restrict you should not feel like okay if i keep something less they will accept it or they will do it because there are the people there are the people in the reviewing committee who are going to review your budget especially the budget they will think are yaar uh, there are need of 10 people but they have written only 5 people how they are going to conduct our research this will be there will be compromising they have just written the less budget just to you know attract us just to attract like 
okay they have written the less quotation less quotation are also the worst quotation remember this less quotations are also the worst quotations those are not accepted at all guys remember this okay so please write the exact budget whatever is needed please include everything whatever is needed look at the fourth point no padding all inclusive but no padding evaluators are aware of what things cost if you are telling them okay my computer will be 1.5 lakh if you are telling my printer will be 5 lakh printer will be 3 lakh okay my research assistant will cost me 50000 per month those people are not idiots who are uh, who are you know sitting in the reviewing committee if you are writing that you know the kit for uh, uh, you know troponin t uh, the kit for troponin t will come for you know 7000 rupees or 700 rupees it comes in 50 rupees 70 rupees those people also know the cost who are giving you the funds they also know the cost so no padding at all no high budgets no less budgets whatever is the exact amount you should keep that these are the important things while you are estimating your budget don't leave everything don't exclude everything okay don't exclude anything i mean include everything whatever is required and no whooping no budget whooping no padding at all that's very important thing to do that okay and then research how much all supplies material research assistant cost and for personal you must factor in benefits you should not think like okay if i am working then i should not think for myself you should look for yourself also like okay if you are having the research assistant with you then you will get your personal time you will get your vacations okay so don't think for the money but think for your personal benefits like vacation time free time okay and uh, you know the mental peace mental health you should not be you know completely de devoted to that devotion is important but not you know your personal time that's why if you need an extra stuff write about it you need it okay can include the student charges hires supplies travel cost everything whatever is there you should include those parts very very important okay so budget section important i'll show you the budget section i'll show you the budget document here don't worry okay so budget is very important so after this research flow chart is my last slide for today and then we'll go to the icmr documents i'll show you the budget chart also then we'll go to the research um, in question answer sessions so research flow chart this is the research flow chart first of all identify the needs and focus on that then find the prospective grants feasible feasible grants time matching okay then uh, i mean matching your criteria meeting your criteria everything what i told you know how to find out how to uh, select a grant then develop the general proposal and budget submit the letter of inquiry inquiry means the short proposal receive the request from formal for the formal application then submit that specific proposal okay then submit the proposal to the agency then agency will review your proposal review your proposal based on that they will they will approve or reject whatever they will receive the award letter if you are accepting i mean if they are accepting your proposal then you know maybe they can negotiate for multiple awards and uh, uh, you know you will get the letter acceptance or decline whatever then if you accept if they accept carry out the project submit it is not nest it is not completed uh, you know until you accept i mean until they accept the funds and allot the funds you have to submit the reports follow up reports every year or every six month whatever is asked by the agency and then you have to find out at the end you have to you have to submit the closer report you have submit all the reports like whatever you have done how you have done whatever you have published whatever is there what what was the sample size whatever results you got all the results all the research report you have to submit and close the funds you have to submit the funding letter funding uh, you know fund utilization letter how much you have used how much is remaining if remaining you have to return it okay everything you have to give in the closure report okay so this is a research flow chart that will take in uh, you know a little details tomorrow okay so that's all for uh, you know from uh, you know for now so i'll now show you the research 
uh, fund grant and icmr ka proposal okay and then we can discuss those things also in the you know proper manner tomorrow let me share uh, one screen mm -hmm. okay so this is yeah see this is the budget justification this is how you write the budget okay this is from icmr this is from icmr justification of budget staff equipment contingency consumables travel allowance whatever is there you have to mention it properly you have to mention it properly people okay you have to mention it properly see staff manpower whatever number you want however you know you want to assistant uh, you want to research assistant to research coordinators one research associate uh, okay whatever is there two pi one co pi whatever and what are the salaries you are going to give as a as being pi or co pi you cannot get the salaries okay but for your staff whatever you are joining you are getting for your research like uh, research assistant research associate you have to get them on board you have to get the salary you have to ask for those salaries also okay ask for the salary for them from the funding agency you have to write everything in the staff and member and you have to write the justification why you are asking for these many people why you are asking for one people two people five people whatever is number you have to write the justification of staff or manpower then equipments what are the equipments you are requiring suppose i want uh, you know want uh, hplc or i want uh, you know uh, uh, anything yeah anything supposed to check the glai hb i want some you know thermometers i want some you know bp instruments or whatever i need i have to write why i need in the justification what is the instrument name and what is the cost of instrument we have to keep in the equipment and contingency uh, contingency and consumables means maybe your you know your uh, stationery your laptop your printer and uh, anything whatever is whatever comes under the contingency consumables okay those like reagents and uh, you know the kits or anything you know like uh, elisa kits or testing kits whatever in consumables you can keep in the consumables you can give the justification okay proper justification with the proper name details then travel allowance like you have to you have to uh, you know go for the icmr meetings you have to go for the principal investigator meetings you have to if you are doing it multi uh, you know multi centric then you have to call everyone every six months for the reports every six month or every one year you have to call everyone for a meeting you know trial meeting or anything so you should keep or you have to visit the other sites then uh, who will pay for the travels you have to mention all the travel allowances or if you want to go for a conference to present your paper so you need uh, you know 1 lakh rupees 50000 and then publication charges everything you should mention in the budget properly with the proper justification you should mention in the budget so this is the proper budget justification form you can get it for everything you can you know estimate your budget and prepare this document properly signed by the principal investigator signed by the hoi and you can immediately you know along with your proposal you have to submit okay you have to submit this okay now let me share the final things uh, uh okay i have this uh, concept i will show you these two concept proposals so one is concept proposal main short proposal one is the full proposal just overview and tomorrow we can discuss these things okay so uh, okay wait 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 please okay this is the concept proposal format okay this is a short proposal from icmr again this is a short proposal from icmr you can see this is very short okay they don't want everything they just want very special things like title of the proposed research project it should be concise then rationale means the novelty and i mean rationale means the background justification of the study then novelty or innovation then the project description where only 70 only 700 words then the strength of pi academic qualifications nature of the employment experience publications whatever, whatever. okay and then institutional support whatever institute can provide so this is the form this is a short proposal format you don't have to mention everything you don't have to mention the entire methodology you just have to write the proposal research project proposed research project idea and then rationale means uh, the justification and then the novelty then the project description short project description okay what kind of what will be the sample size feasibility expected outcomes or inter department or inter institutional timelines budget in a short form and then strength of pi institutional support that's all 
this is a short proposal once they go through the short proposal this is like two or three pages maximum after write, writing after once they go through this if they like it they will invite you for the full proposal okay and i'll show you what is the full proposal now i'll share the full proposal with you and we will describe these things tomorrow in details okay mm, so this is the full ad hoc proposal guys see listen this see, see here format for the research plan this uh, you know title of the proposed research summary keywords abbreviations background 500 words literature review 1000 words novelty innovation study objectives methodology 2000 words means descriptive everything study design sample size project implementation plan ethical review data collection statistical analysis expected outcomes limitations of the study and uh, you know limitations of the study or uh, you know your the future plans timelines supports everything you have to write in this okay institutional supports budget justification everything you have to write this is a full plan you know this is a full proposal from icmr that those things we can discuss tomorrow so that's all for today guys and tomorrow we are going to discuss the nis project tomorrow is very important because we are going to discuss the rules do and don'ts and other other special you know coverage of this uh, program so thank you very much for you know patient listening guys and i think uh, we took more than two and a half hours right now two and a half hour almost so right now i'm open for your questions anyone anyone who have the question please open your mic and ask okay i'll just go through the chat if any questions are there i'll take from the chat uh, So I have one question. Am I audible to you? You are audible, uh, Miss Sally, but you are. Am I uh, audible, sir? Yes, yes, you are audible. Please tell. Yeah. Yes, please tell. Ma'am, your uh, voice is not uh, clear. Yeah. Ma'am, your voice is not coming. Can you write your question, please? Um, okay. Hello. Ha, hello. Yes. Good evening, sir. This is Aditya here. Hi. Good evening, Aditya. Yes, please ask Aditya. Uh, sir, one question. I saw a heading uh, by this thing like clinical trials in the proposal. Add up proposal. Clinical trials details. Suppose if we don't have those details of clinical trials, can we overlook that section? Yes, definitely. Whatever is not there, you can definitely do that. Because I'm from a pharmaceutical biotechnology background and our data is more on, more based on laboratory uh, data. I understand. And maybe, see, uh, that could be a thing because I have taken the uh what we say this template is for the pain management part wala uh, you okay. know proposal okay. so maybe maybe they have focused on the clinical trial part but there are the different different formats as i told you you have to select the appropriate grant so yeah. every grant has their own uh, you know different different proposal uh, you know templates okay. so it's not it's not necessary if it is not relevant to you you can over uh, you know you you can overlook definitely you can over i can overlook that yes Yes. So because I haven't uh, promised any animal studies in my proposal because I am working on a, a bioprocess based research project where I'm going to produce a polymer and then I may go for this thing, but the producing polymer itself will take time. So that right. is the reason I wanted to know whether, so it's clear, right? I can overlook it. Yeah. yeah. See, if it is not relevant to your area, you can definitely overlook. No problem at all. Okay. okay. Okay, sir. Thank so, you very much. Sir. I, ha I have one very interesting question in chat. Uh, Sai is asking why should not add our name for the salary, but only hired persons. Okay. See, if I am the PI, PI, principal investigator or co-investigator, and I am writing for the grant proposal, I am the person who is taking the entire responsibility. I am getting the credentials. I am getting those credits 
at the end i will be the pi the uh, you know the outcomes whatever is the outcome maybe the result maybe the publications maybe the patents whatever will come will come on my name those will be credits to me i cannot withdraw the direct money as salary from any trial but i will get the indirect benefits which means a lot to me okay that's how pis are not allowed to take salaries in the clinical research or in any kind of research if see there are salaried pi also see if you are conducting institutional if you are conducting industrial research in your site pis are paid but in that case people do not get the credit credit in the sense publications patents or their name in the final results okay they do not get those credits guys that's very important then okay sai i hope i i have uh, clear your doubt uh, good evening ajit sir am i audible uh, good evening santosh sir very yeah. good evening, yeah. thanks a lot for a lucid presentation thank you sir uh, just uh, uh, one question i wanted to ask uh, is no, it sir, mandatory please. to go with the methodology which is which has been proposed or can we add few other more procedures because while pro because there is a gap between uh, while writing and approval so meanwhile if we can if we are getting some good new procedures so can we add later on or should we of stick to the we, methodology uh, which are being proposed yes of course we can add sir see uh, i mean uh, suppose uh, we are okay i'll tell you two scenarios here suppose new technology or new procedures have been introduced after you have submitted the short proposal so definitely you can include those in the full proposal when you are proposing to a grant agency grant providing agency and if after the certain time once your even the grants are allotted grants are accepted then also you can go for it you can change the methodology part but for that you have to go for protocol deviation okay mm. you have to go for protocol deviation you have to submit to the ethical committee any ethical committee animal or whatever and you have to inform the sponsor in prior you have to you have to inform the uh, sponsor in prior with the proper justification that okay this technology would help improving our results improving our uh, achievements whatever we are looking for improving our outcomes so you can do that but you have to inform your ethics committee and sponsor in prior with the proper justification okay thank you thank you sir thank you sir okay some more question if i have a perfect novel proposal but i am not csir net gate gpet qualified will i still be selected based on my perfect protocol of course there is no need to see if you are associated with any institute whether you are a student or professor assistant professor anything you can apply if you have a great idea you can apply for the grant csir net gate gpet are fellowships remember guys fellowships are not grants fellowships are not research grants i mean they are indirect research grants but fellowships means you are getting paid with some amount to proceed your work remember this fellowships are not exactly the proper research grants but fellowships are the salary plus some amount to proceed your work okay net gpet gate these are the fellowships salaried fellowships if you are look what we are discussing here is a grant proposal proper grant proposal those grant proposals anyone can write you should be associated with the institute or maybe some uh, you know in some cases if you are not associated also you can write the that without even net gate or gpet uh hello sir this is sachin sachin from uh, dr diva patel institute hello sir so, yes please sir. please yeah, sir so uh, uh, i'm I, i apologize that in between i uh, i've been forced out of the presentation but i heard and uh, i listen very carefully that you said validation documents are required while writing a proposal yes so uh, like you know when we are writing the proposal the things are not validated at all so how no, no. can we navigate and how can we uh, uh, just uh, try to answer that question with the vague information and again uh, related to the instrumentation you said that qualification is required yes. so I, as i understand in being a industrial perspective it is definitely available like iq oq dq pq every time and revalidation of the instrumentation is done every yes. time 
but yes. at institutional level how should we manage all this activity can See, you just uh, focus that for, for five minutes because um, i again apologize if you if you might have uh, said that but uh, do I, will, will... I will answer this i will answer this i i will answer this don't worry don't worry don't worry mr Sachin. so the thing is see what i told is there are multiple aspects i'll share with you in the grants also in the grants also what when we are talking about research grants research grants are not only after the validation research grants are also to develop the instruments if you have that idea to develop the instrument then you do not need to provide the validation okay if you want to come up with an instrument like laboratorical instrument or something then you can apply like i have this idea to develop the instrument i have this idea to uh, you know implement the new technique in hplc there you do not need validation validation means what i told is like if i am conducting a survey in the patients like uh, on medication adherence there are the validated questionnaires there are the validated questionnaires which are already available as you told if you are using the instruments from the industry they have their validation documents along with them so you do not have to do the validation again at but if you are coming up with the new things if you are applying the new procedure if you are applying the new concern if you are applying the new instrument you should be validated it should be validated and you have to produce the validation data okay but if you are asking the funds for the instrumentation only development of the instrument then you do not have to produce the validation form because you are going to develop that instrument so there are different aspects okay I hope I answered your question. Uh, yes, mostly, largely it is answered. But still, if, if I need, I'll, I'll definitely would like to have a discussion in person with you for that matter. Sure, sure. Anytime, anytime, anytime. Definitely. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for that. Thank you very much. Okay, Alam Elu has one question. Whether PI has received any grant previously? This is the usual question. No, no. <laughs> Not at all. See, this thing I told in the starting only, uh, Allah Melu, your question is very valid. You know, uh, whether PI has received any grant previously. This is the usual question at all. Uh, I mean, in all, if chance given, then only there will be Sachin Tendulkar. Not at all. This is not in the research that only Sachin Tendulkar will get a chance again and again because he's expert. Not at all. See, if they are providing funds only to the experts, means there will be no chance and opportunities for the newcomers. How they assess the newcomers, that I emphasized. They find out your competency through your research idea, through your uh, methodology, through your uh, implementation idea. They will assess you. They will assess the competence of the new people, assess the competence of the new person who has no experience. If you have that caliber, if you have that caliber, if you have that potential, they will allot the funds to you over even the experienced person if he or she has not done, if he, he or she has not presented the proposal properly. Understand my point? So it's not necessary that always experienced person will get that. Experienced person have that experience, they know how to propose. Okay. But if you have that caliber, if your idea has the caliber and potential, you will definitely get over the experienced person that I have seen in the research. So this is not at all, uh, you know, the case. Uh, case reports are not funded at all. No, not at all, guys, please. Case reports are like one person, one uh, person will not help in the research. Uh, I mean, one person is not allotted for the funds at all. Thank you very much, guys, for appreciation. Thank you very much. Of course, I'll give the flash on SCRB tomorrow. We'll discuss the SCRB uh, funding uh, templates also and funds also, OK? Non-PSD candidates can apply for the grants. Yes, if you are a master's student, you can apply. If you're a bachelor's student, have a good idea. If you're a PharmD student, if you're MBBS student, nursing student, or physiotherapy student, or any health science, non-health science, technical students, you can apply for grant. Anyone can apply for the grants if they are aligning or meeting the criteria. It's not necessary that only PhD candidates can apply for the grants. Uh, 
herbal drugs ayush go for the ayush website ayush website has multiple opportunities for the herbal drugs they give the lot of funds no during the research we can uh, we can change the sample size uh, body sridevi miss body sridevi but we have to give the proper justification like if you are not getting the samples properly if you are not getting the samples if you are not uh, you know getting uh, the time to complete if it is not completed in timeline then you can you know customize the sample size but only with the permission of sponsor and only with the permission of ethics committee and only with the permission of the teams okay okay in budget section which important documents mandatory what is it? Nee, budget sec budget section i think i showed you no documents to be placed no documents to be placed okay they don't ask the cost certificate of anything you just have to mention the cost they check by themselves yes that's important most of the funding sources are checking whether the courses are, colleges are accredited or not yes that is true if your uh, college is accredited that means you have the more weightage and more advantage to get the funds that's true that i agree yes uh, abu sufyan sheikh yes you are right sir uh we always keep that that we can that we keep in the contingencies and that also we can keep the we keep it inflation budget okay there is something called inflation budget and that we can keep 10 to 20% inflation in our budget always okay so you can keep that 10 to 20, 10 to 15% of the inflation budget you can keep that's not at all a problem uh dr nabil has also joined so uh, i have uh, yeah I'm, i'm 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 listening so i just want to add the uh, previous question you just answered that for yes, the 10 to 15 percentage extra so yes, i think uh, especially um, one mistake most of the researchers make they are not considering the customs clearance cost if they are planning to import some equipment or something from uh, outside because that clearance cost is also really huge uh, when you are importing some equipment so you need to consider all those things when it's not just the uh, uh, you know the quotation amount that you are getting for an equipment for example will right. be the final cost so you need to consider those things as well uh, when you're planning for the budget and otherwise it will be an overburden uh, also i think you have already mentioned about the publications right open access publications now we are getting you know good attention for example even from aha uh, publication plus all those things also so you can also include the amount for that uh in the budget i think you also you already mentioned that during the travel and everything so this customs clearance cost i want to specifically em emphasize because i made a mistake in the very beginning then uh, uh you know it was overburden now you have to consider that extra so you can calculate uh, how much extra how much amount will be the clearance and everything duty what i mean to say yes yeah that so i just is, want to add at one point don't no no add. definitely it is uh, you know uh, right addition here uh, dr nabil because people you know when they write the budget when they estimate the budget they do not consider these things that's why i always tell you know even my associates look at everything whatever you need all inclusive that's why i focused on all inclusive means you have to include all necessary parts all necessary yes otherwise you are going to overburden yourself and your team and your institute <laughs> yes exactly um why I, i maybe i will add one more point related to the budget uh, because that's the most important part i think i'm audible right ajit kal tufan aaya tha baada kar rahe the aur tumhe raja uncle ke ghar se tod tod ki awaaz aa rahi hai yes quite audible please i know i i heard some noise in between anyway so that's about uh, the but, um uh, yeah so what uh, one one thing i uh, most of the proposals are we used to practice that say suppose you are targeting for one cr or say two cr and see if you uh, can arrange the amount some amount from the institutions or some other source you can actually mention that i am asking for yes. say 75 percentage of my total cost rest yes. of the 25 percentage i will be arranging through my collaborations or my uh, institutions or maybe other source maybe you already have some seed grant which you have already got or something then the reviewer right. will be convinced that okay you are putting some effort to make some amount from somewhere and you are asking for the rest for the support it's not like you give me money then i will do my research then right. the research people 
I mean, why why should I grant? It's not like you know a personal relationship, right? So you put your maximum effort through other sources, right. through institutions or maybe some pharma collaborations or something, and say they are able to provide you thirty percentage. So I need support to execute the research for the rest of the seventy percentage. I'm asking for the grant. That right. is more convincing way of asking for funds. Not like you give me full with an extra ten to fifteen percentage so that I can do my research. Absolutely. It's not quite convincing. and um it's like you're not putting your effort from your side to raise some fund so if you can That's mention it. that you can exclusively mention you can uh, in the budget planning i think uh, maybe tomorrow when you're showing you can also show some example so you show the full all inclusive uh, amount then you show that how much amount you will be raising through your other contacts and other uh, sources then right. show the remaining amount is what you're asking for that will right. be quite convincing when you present yes. the budget is yes. a related topic so i just added in that absolutely 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 yes so um see i i i have that example you know i'll give you the example this is not about the research funds it's very important but you know as dr nabil has added it's very much important if you have more collaborators you can mention you can ask them for the funds or from your university for seed you know seed amount and all but i'll give you the very you know uh, a funny example here from icmr you know for uh, non icmr scientist they give the travel grant to uh, to attend the you know conferences in abroad uh, like if you want to attend any conference in us canada or you know europe or anywhere they give the grants to non icmr scientists you know what is the what is the criteria of them i mean one of the major criteria if you have whether you have 20000 only from your institution or from the agency which is conducting the conference if they give some amount 10000 20000 30000 then icmr accepts easily with a you know warm regards with the warm greetings because they feel like okay this idea has potential this abstract acceptance has potential it is accepted by someone else also some other collaborators by the university it is funded by the university also it is funded by the you know conference society also or uh you know i have done many times you know when i whenever i go to uh, like europe or you know us uh, for my you know i mean this uh, other states for my uh, you know conferences my institute support 50000 or 30000 for uh, you know from my perks uh, and then i saw that okay i'm getting 50000 from my institute rest one leg icmr you give so every time consistently uh, you know like icmr dst they they easily accept it if you have the you know travel grant or any kind of grant so the similarly in the research grant see this is not about the amount you are getting from other side this is about the competency this is about your potential that you have the potential to grab the amount grab the funds from someone else also so they believe like your idea is really good your idea is really uh, have that potential you know caliber so you know they easily accept that they easily you know look into those factors also that shows your competence that you are getting the funds from other side also so it means that it is really a good idea okay it is really worth uh, you know uh, going ahead with the with this kind of research and all so this shows that competency the thing you know not about the funds when they are giving 75 lakhs they can give uh, you know uh, 25 lakhs also but if you are getting 25 lakh from institution or other collaborators icmr will happily give you 75 lakh okay that is the thing Yes, yeah, someone was raising the hand. I believe. Okay, guys. If no more questions, yes, Doctor Nabil, I have one question for you. So, if I miss something, if I miss something from the technical background, as you are from the technical side, because I can uh, tell that I must have missed something from the technical. uh you know research grant writing proposals and all because i have shown all the samples or i have shown all the you know scripts from the medical side and from the icmr and these things so if anything i left please add on um i think you have covered most of the thing uh even uh, technical side like you rightly mentioned it's about the collaboration um yes. especially if somebody is developing something on the medical domain and they give a proposal only from the engineering background it will reject no doubt about it that because you can't have uh, you know full proof uh, research conducted without a support uh, i mean like a medical uh, say for example device development or anything without a support from a hospital 
so that collaboration importance you have rightly mentioned i would like to add regarding the page and i'm surprised why people are not asked any questions about that so when you have a novel idea yeah should we go for a patent first or should we uh, can we apply for a grant and then uh, go for a patent so it it's again uh, a confusing thing so it comes in multiple aspects for example if you are collaborating with an institution and you don't want this idea is yours and you are getting the collaboration from the institution uh, for the support of execution of your idea and you don't want to be they are as an inventor then uh, i would recommend to go for patent at least the uh, provisional application yes before you are actually uh, you know disclosing the idea with somebody and put together yes. a pay, uh, a proposal yes moreover uh, patent when they are looking for the background search um you can't even publish a conference article or not, not even an abstract about this idea yeah. before you are filing the patent i think you most of them know that so they are looking yes. for the novelty you should be applying this idea to the concerned uh, patent uh, authority if in the case it is will be in india and the our jurisdiction will be here so you have to have the at least the uh, what you call the provisional application filed yes. way before you are actually going for the abstract publication or conference any to relate to that at the same yes. time uh, uh, from yes, my experience ahead. yeah from yes. my experience uh, what i learned uh, in a bad way that uh you should apply the uh, maybe the uh, provisional application the patent before you also put the grant uh, proposal or yes. uh, anything because you are disclosing the idea beyond your uh, you know beyond your team or beyond your circle and yes. that idea can you know divert to many things and if yes. the patent agency is looking for the background search and if this uh, grant uh, team is uh, putting this content whatever the idea you are put on the internet or somewhere in available uh, as a publicly access- accessible document any time then you you will not get your patent granted so that application your grant application will become the background or the prior art for yes. your own idea you will get back fired so if you yes. have a unique idea and you have a plan for patent in the future you can yes. raise the fund from somewhere because the provisional application in india is is actually not so costly so you can apply for the provisional or you can go for the pct application and then you will get almost 6 18 months then you can also extend the pct application for another 36 months before you file that one actually into any anything so you can go for the uh, no provisional application this is very important because you disclosing your idea beyond your desk yes and you have no way back your idea your own idea it will backfire Uh, so that's an important point so any anyone who planning to write a proposal which is patentable or they have a plan for the patent then better go with at least the provisional application don't wait for the grant some to come to uh, apply for the patent which may get backfire in some instance so yes. this is what i want to add from the yes. technical i aspect. i would like to add to this dr nabil there are uh, you know as rightly said your your idea novel idea is your you know gem you should not lose it to anyone else so get it patented and there are the patents on the concepts also if you have the innovative concept with you you can get the concept patent also you can get the procedural patent also you get the instrumentation patent also there are the patent types so it is not necessary yep. that so uh, i think I'm, i'm am i right dr nabil yeah yeah there are multiple types like the uh, like you rightly mentioned there is also design patents for example you yes. are designing some new equipment or maybe even an a, a kit whatever it is you can even protect your design idea there are design patents yes. there are methodology patents there are uh, process or procedure patents yes anything so you can do a, a patent patentability search for yes. your idea through yeah. um, a genuine uh, patent agencies so they will yes. do it they will validate the idea and they yes. can you can work yes. around that and then you go ahead with the patent application in one side uh, whatever be the novel method or methodology or causes there are multiple ways to do it yes um, true you said it including the designs so i think uh, we have true. filed more than 20 25 design things it was new to us so but the designs is unique and then we got patent granted for some of the equipments which uh, designed so there are design patents also you are right. you just want to give the 
sketch, 3D sketch of that, it will get granted and it will granted very fast. Design right. patents will grant very fast. I think within uh, six to nine months, it will grant it. Other Absolutely. patents, of course, will take time. Yeah. Yes. So, yes, guys, this is very important. Okay. Okay, I'll go to some questions then. For herbal drugs, Ayus, Ayus website, please, uh, Vigneshwar, please go to Ayus website, A-A-Y-E-Y-U-S-H, Ayus website, Government of India, Ayus website. They give the funds for these things, okay? Uh, my M Pharma project is a part of my PhD guides, ICMR project. Do they include my expenses in their budget also? No. <laughs> so I think somebody is thinking like if their PI is getting the their salary in their pocket. No, not at all. It doesn't happen. So the idea is very yeah. simple. You can't have <laughs> payment from two uh, two sources. That's not acceptable. That's that's as simple yes. as that. And if you are a PI, of course you have to have a salary from somebody somewhere. You can't uh, get the salary from this proposal. Exactly. The idea is very simple. You can you can't get a salary from Two sources or more than two sources. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Mahalakshmi, I think, is asking can the PI have two proposals sanctioned from different funding agencies? Yes, they can have, but not the same idea. <laughs> they can have, but not the same idea. If they have different, different ideas, they can get the funding from different, different agencies. That's not a problem. Funding for PhD, you can get if your idea is novel, if your idea has some potential. You should apply for the funding, ICMR grants or something. Take it as a project. Your PhD you could be funded. It. You should. My PhD was funded by NIH. And exactly. Might be funded by NIH. Your PhD might be funded by NIH. Exactly. So, but in that case, you can't be the PI. Your professor and the co-guides will be the PI. Oh, you yes. may not be the co-PI also. Some, sometimes yes. some professor, is, it matters. So you can, yes. if the yes. idea is your own idea and you originally proposed that, you should ask for that. Yes. Don't uh, don't uh, let it go because he's my professor. Don't, please don't do that. If it is your idea, you should get the credit. You, you, you can be the co-PI. Yes. Yeah, you can be the co-PI. You can't be the PI. Yes. That's too much. Uh, you can be the maybe, PhD see, maybe, maybe, maybe you can work as research associate or maybe you can tag you, yourself as a research associate, but you this is your idea and your PhD, so you will get the credentials in the yeah. publications. Yeah, yeah. And PhD ideas, if it is got granted, then your PhD will be beyond colorful. You can exactly. put the uh, grant in your publications that this sub this was supported by this. You can put it in the first page of your thesis that this first was supported thesis. by this. That will exactly. clearly show that your idea has been validated by a funding agency and they believed on this idea and they funded you. That means this idea is something novel and unique. Mm -hmm. You will get Absolutely. full credit of that one during a PhD. PhD ideas, if given an opportunity, should uh, apply for a grant so that you yes. will have the luxury of doing the research. You can do all the trial errors, uh, not like the 10, 15 lakh typically the universities give for the PhD students. You will have the luxury of uh, doing the PhD in a you know, very colorful way. Should apply for and, that. And, and people, you know, uh, and Dr. Naveel and people, I must say here, you know, I was getting the better salary than now in my PhD because I was, that was my PhD uh, idea, the registry I did on the same heart failure research. So I was getting the better salary than now that time because I was the research associate and that 96 lakh came to us as a research grant, you know, yeah. and that was my PhD. So it was absolutely colorful and the fun doing that PhD. People say that PhD is not the fun. But my PhD was absolutely fun because we had a lot of grants, lot of things, all resources, everything was done properly. It, it's very simple that research involves money. You need money yes. to do the research. Yes. And there are uh, agencies who is ready to give you this fund. You just yes. want to put your idea in the right format, convincing fashion, you will get it. Then you can do the research in a very, very, you know, uh, interesting way not like oh i don't have this much fund then i can't buy that equipment then you yes. will come down from the objective to something 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 then it will become an academic research yes and finally okay this is fifth year i have to put something i have to graduate that that typically happens so the, from the beginning you look for the opportunity you talk discuss with your guide supervisor okay. and look for the opportunity of the funding more importantly, yes. PhD students, if they are, I mean, not with the not experience, they will uh, learn how to write a proposal yes. at the right yes. time 
uh, with the guidance of an experienced supervisor so by the time they graduate they can be an independent researcher they can write their own uh, their own proposal say they are yes. joining as an assistant professor they have not written a single grant uh, it will take long time for them to uh, you know come up with a very efficient grant and by yes. the time you will lose your credibility in the institution so you are not bringing money into the institution if you are not bringing the money into the institution yes. and the inst- you will not get you can't shine it's simply as that see two things again i want to add very interesting things if you have the money if you have the good grants you will finish your phd in within timeline okay if you do not have the funds you will stretch it it actually stretches okay so that is one thing and the second thing if you are in phd if you are applying for phd you have a prepared protocol yaar just apply whether it is getting accepted or not just apply for the grants at the right place okay at the right place right agency right funding uh, opportunity just apply don't worry okay because you have the prepared protocol you just have to modify it according to the funding agency that's all for phd i feel there is nothing which is left behind you know uh, from a research proposal also research proposal includes the same thing phd also include the same things phd also have the gantt chart phd also have the budgets phd also have everything entire comprehensive methodology so just give it a try okay guys so any other questions we'll take one or two more questions it's nine already uh and we can take some more questions tomorrow also maybe we have uh, tomorrow session 3 to 5:30 also okay guys so benefits of pi pi as dr nabil has described rightly and i also told you pi will get all the perks all the credits he will be the pi of project he has conducted that this is the big thing because he got the grant on his name the grants have been allotted on pi name he will get the credentials he will get the credit entire credit will go to pi that is the biggest credit he can so in the big letters on the front page of his cv that is the biggest achievement for them and then the publications travels presentations conferences and all the corresponding collaborations associations everything will come to the pi okay guys so thank you thank you very much everyone for joining and again i must thank our audience who were patiently listening till the end of the workshop all 200 plus people who have joined 220 210 every you know i was looking at the number and thank you very much dr nabil for uh, you know giving this 3 uh, hours to us and uh, you know you are welcome again tomorrow with dr rupa if you have time if you have time okay ah, ah, sure i will try to join that no force okay so and thank you dr tarun thank you dr sawan chitlange thank you bujwal sir and uh, uh, you know the entire staff of uh, uh, dr dy patel institute of pharmaceutical sciences thank you very much and thank you everyone see you tomorrow 3 pm so don't forget you will get the reminder email also but don't forget to join us at 3 pm Five minutes before only we'll join. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So take care. Good night, guys. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.